Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Lazarus Expedition. We have a stellar session for you today. Our players are in the Badlands, and they're going to have a good time. They're going to have a great time. But before we hop into our players just having a wonderful time with the rocky ground and the monsters and the no vegetation or life and the water filled with algae and intelligent things that will pull you into it. Uh, before we, we get into all that, why don't we see what's going on with our players? How's it going, Nick? Um, it's going all right. Yeah. Your, your Been... fan's off. Is it not hot anymore? No, 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 it's not. The last couple of days, it's got, it's got cold here. So, um, I was away at the weekend in Germany. It was really warm there. As soon as I landed back in Manchester, fucking, well, not freezing, but you know, the summer, it feels like summer's over, mm -hmm. except it's not, but, uh, yeah. Oh, you're still getting the heat down there. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I thought you know. he was calling you a bastard because of what you said about Germany last week. <laughs> Listen, there's no need to dig up old wounds, is there? Okay. <laughs> We've all moved past that. It's not, I was also appalled when I saw that physics had made it into, a, into the uh, <laughs> fucking shorts as well. It's terrible. <laughs> You're not going to live it down. That's, that's, all that's right. physics ruthless whenever one of us will make a bad joke. That's it, yeah. <laughs> I'm embarrassed forever. Well, whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you know, other than that, not too much to report. All right. Did you well, what did you get a nice beer over there? Yes. Well, I drank the the one beer that we drank. So we go to this place called Dusseldorf, and long time watchers of me and Neil's shows will have heard me mention this because I've been about seven times in the last nine years. Um, they do this beer there called Alt Beer, which means old beer, I believe. And you drink it in the Alt Stadt, which means old street, I think. And it's just this like they give it to you in small glasses. It's kind of like the flavor of a darker beer but it's light like a pilsner and you don't even have to order it the guy just comes and just brings you one after another after another after another until you just say like please no more let me pay and then you stumble into some place and eat some roast pork of some description maybe it's a sausage it's usually got potato and sauerkraut it's how much is time. like one beer i think it was like two euros 40. <laughs> what yeah that's insane. Yeah. <clears throat> Did spend about 800 quid between two of us in two and a half days. <laughs> 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 Just drinking beer and eating pork, but you know, what are you going to do? Oh, hey, man, you're living the dream. I'm going to the Iron fucking Maiden on Friday. So let's go. No way. Fucking sweets, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, man. Or, are they playing at like the retirement home or <laughs> <laughs> this is their last this is their last fucking tour dude so you know made him part on a good show they're always known it's part on a good show and i'm pretty sure that bruce is still uh gonna be able to do a good job of it so i'm looking forward to it even if i do get scalped on the tickets but whatever mm. all right man anyone else have something to bring up jamie uh Wow, you really put me on the spot there. Uh, I actually, I went down to uh, a town. I'm not going to say the name of the town, but it's in Ireland. Uh, I'm not going to say it because my friend lives down there. It's a really small town. Uh, and I got absolutely toasted on um, blood orange cider. And it was really, really good. Nice. And uh, we just had an incredible weekend of like talking to the locals. And it's like if anyone who's been to Ireland and you've been to a small town in Ireland, talking to a local it's like translating i he would say something and i would have to turn to my american friend and be like he just said this <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it was a great weekend fabulous well unless someone else has something to bring up no 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 all right let's do it where last we left off we had fought some bird people. What were they called? Oh. Four letters, Whoa. starting with a K. Kuri. Who cares? Who cares is the right <laughs> name. Oh. There you go. Dead. Four letter word, D-E-A-D. -E yeah. That's right. Uh, it had been a brutal battle. It looked pretty touch and go there for a minute. The only person who shouldn't get knocked in the water got knocked in the water. And um, but you know what? Yes. The party the party made it out. 
And with the advent of our Hobgoblin spellcaster, we've got a tiny hut to stay in. And I think the party's going to be resting for a couple days while they repair their boat and keep an eye out on things. Luckily, you got enough supplies for your trip and then some. And you've got some fresh birdman meat. And um, let's head back to our little map and see what's going on. But Neil, what were the bad friend called? Kazu. 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 You just have to scroll up in the, the chat log a little. <clears throat> that would read. require a lot of effort from me. Anyway, yeah. I know so that, that finger night, motion is, you know, just. I only ever scroll down, okay? I've been on Twitter too long. That, that, that <laughs> scrolled up motion, that died. Okay, oh, if I scroll past true. something, I just keep scrolling down in the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that night, I would like to, uh, unless anyone in the party objects, turn our kill into a feast. Not a big feast, but a traditional in Hobgoblin culture. And uh, Iron Grip will explain this, that after you kill something, you have to eat it so that it can go to the great maw in the sky, right? Where it'll go get eaten and digested and then re be reborn um, in the soil. As is in the tradition of his hobgoblin ancestry. Now, I don't know if all hobgoblins believe this, but his particular tribe believes in the great maw in the sky. That's why when a goblin, when a smaller goblin dies, you eat him. You can't let the meat go to waste. Plus, it's the only way he can get into heaven. Um, so, our opponents being fearsome, I will cook us up a nice meal of uh, kazu liver and invite mm. everyone to feast <clears throat> i will cautiously I come around the fire as you set mm -hmm. this up and i uh say draw raises did it really have to be the liver um the liver is where the warriors kills are stored so when you consume the liver uh you assimilate their knowledge in battle. Right. Does kind of look a little bit pink, though, you know? They, uh, it, it has been cooked. I mean, and Draw Razor will kind of look at the outside and say, the outside is very well done, incredibly brown. Um, Just how he likes I, it. I, pre I prefer... <laughs> I prefer my meat to be juicy and fresh. I mean, to be fair, I could eat a hockey puck as long as it's got a good crust on it. <laughs> well, that's because I'm demented old man. <laughs> Cheers to that. Okay, well, here goes nothing. It's a new friend. Oh, yeah. Take a bite. Mmm. Delicious. Yeah. How, how good... I would like you to tell me how good my feast is, okay? Did we roll those? Our friendship. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wait, could you want me yes. to roll for how well I cook this? Um, yes. Why don't you give me a chef's tools proficiency check? You're not proficient in it, so I don't think you get to add your proficiency bonus. But chef's tools, I think, is an int check? Oh, listen. I got great int, okay? I'm the smartest hobgoblin on Earth. So you just want me to tap my int? How do I do that? Uh, Well, on the far left side where it says intelligence... You you click the text. Ah, there you go. It's barely oh. in the game for that oh, much wow. sass now. There you go. This is the <laughs> best I've only been Kazu playing this for three years. Okay. I'm <laughs> <laughs> a break. Um. Hey, I I so rarely click that text. Okay. Listen, I'm mm -hmm. gonna forget. <laughs> it's a. It's fine. Fine. Okay. Um, so when I'm making my group skill check, how does his intelligence check relate to that? Well, so I think the grub skill here is a. How do we say? The DC, maybe. Ooh, I like that. I really like that. So you're. No, but the so higher saying, grub skill is better. 20, right? <clears throat> I'm saying that because he's rolled a 20, he can <clears throat> satisfy people with this meal up to a grub skill of 20. Mmm. Maybe. Ooh. I don't think I ever read, rolled grub skill, did I? Well, what? Uh, don't some people rate like a high grub skill as you can eat anything or as? Yeah, because grub skill is your enjoyment of food, but there should be some level of counterplay to like how good the cooking was to begin with. And I 
you know, this was not meant to be a system that was ever interacted with other than as for the lulls yeah, when rolling right. your character sheets. So uh, what, what is the funniest way we can rule this then? Like in this situation? <laughs> so I think because I'm cooking a cultural dish and in my culture, um, the meat should be like a little bit undercooked and then we like just build up a natural resistance to eating slightly raw meat. That like if I roll a 20, that means I cooked it perfectly to the point where it's underdone and no matter what he does, he's going to be shitting himself tomorrow if he eats the <laughs> <laughs> Or, or, right, because this is a creature that we don't have back at, oh no, you're from here, so you've probably cooked this creature before. Mm hmm Yeah, well, I don't know. That's it. It's, you know, he got a 20. I feel like he gets 20, we don't get sick. That feels like that makes sense. You know, he's got that perfect point where it's it's to 56 degrees or whatever. You know, it's not, it's not dangerous, but it still tastes great. Mm. Why don't you just roll me a d20 plus your grub skill, and we'll see how much you enjoy these things. Because probably eating weird bird person, um, the cooking on that is maybe not the most important part. True. Oh, Mr. Mooton, you love it. A little Best bit damn liver you've ever had. Me. That's the worst experience uh, he should get for eating that meal, by the way. You are quite the cook, XP. my hobgoblin <laughs> friend. This reminds me of the finer meals I've had from back home. Uh, Iron Grip will be proud after this is said to him. <laughs> um, he was never a particularly good cook uh, in his tribe, but he takes this as a really gracious acknowledgement of his culture by Cassian, and it'll strengthen their bond a little bit. Oh, nice. Bond is I'd like to think that Cypher has been over this withdrawal of Razor. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, yeah. she no longer eats. <laughs> <laughs> I think I get. Wait, I think that's pretty what happens. So I'm, I'm like two bites in and I look over to Cypher, who doesn't have a plate. And I'll say, <laughs> Cypher, you're not, you're not eating? Not particularly hungry today. <laughs> the whole day. Can I can I eat your Cypher? Cassian will go to grab the plate. Help yourself. Cassian will I will. enjoy it. I will assist you eating Cypher's portion, or else these beings will not go to heaven. <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll eat some of their leftover. You're doing them a service. After um, after we've eaten, I think I've got to dry my clothes and armor off after falling in the river, so I'll probably like strip down and put stuff near the fire to, you know, dry out. Mm -hmm. And then uh, say, so what are we doing? How long do we think the boat's going to take to fix? A day or two? Who's fixing Day or two. Yeah. yeah, I think it might be me, actually, maybe, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think it's you, the one guy. Blake? <clears throat> or Ethan, Ethan. Uh, Ethan's doing it with your oversight, because you know enough about boating to Oops. tell him what to do, but he's just the better worker. Yeah, I'm better than that. Welcome to the middle manager club, Stiermir. <laughs> Thanks. Feels uh, kind of useless, like I'm just sitting here doing fuck off. He wouldn't be able to do anything without your support. <clears throat> I look over to fixing the boat. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> it's quite a good feeling, actually. Um, Drove Razor will kind of ignore the jovial conversation and kind of turn to Cypher and say, we should have a plan for defense while the boat is being repaired. I like the idea. And she will immediately launch into, like, strategic discussion and, like, positioning and all that. Yeah. Um... Drove Razor will raise the idea that he'll keep a like a bubble, a uh, tiny hut, like ritual casted in this area with everyone in it every eight hours so that we have an area to retreat to if things get scary outside. And we can hide our numbers, all that sort of stuff. What's the name Sounds of our new, uh, our new guide, Neil? Uh, your guide is Ostigan. So after Drove Razor says that about the plan to defend ourselves. Ostigan, uh, what can we expect out here at night? I mean, those kaku things were bad enough, but... I, I tried to tell you once what was in the Badlands, and no one wanted to know. Are you interested? Yeah, it, well, it was less relevant then. It's more relevant now. It yeah, now less... we're in the Badlands. <laughs> uh, in, the, in, in the waters... The three biggest threats are jellyfish you see bobbing there. Do not take that bath. 
um, <clears throat> giant crabs. Hard on outside, squishy inside. And um, fishmen, sahuguin. But they, they're not so far upriver. We, we should be past them now. May, maybe scouting party, but otherwise it's fine. Uh, in air? Kazu? We can kill, but they, they're hard. Um, <clears throat> winged snake. They sound not so scary. They're much more scary than that. They uh, build up charge and uh, whole area around them. Oh, I like there trick flying way? snakes. <laughs> yes, yes. They, they have wing too. They flap. The wings build charge. Very mm -hmm. odd. Sounds like yes. my kind of animal though. Yes. Twelve, twelve razors will now start calling um, a steer mirror, a reverse crab because he's squishy on the outside and hard on the inside. <laughs> oh. Are you able to turn down your mic a little bit, Koibu? Because we're saying it's too loud. Yes. How's that? Probably good. All right. Uh, is, there, is there any way to deal with the Kazu to make them not attack us? Oh, well, I think so. We have already dealt with Kazu, no? <laughs> they dead? I don't think those, these ones are coming back. Others? Some of them got away, though. They got friends, maybe? They'll come back with their friends? And mm. what? Let their friends die? I don't know. Maybe there's more of them. I mean, they're peoples. They're, they're not super dumb. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, they did not do very well, huh? They, they got no food, and um, all but one or two died. So uh, if I were them, they would not come back. I would leave this meal alone. But who knows? Uh, I, I, I have brain bigger than bird. Mm, hmm. Last, last thing that flies, that is problem. Um, I think, uh, the word is manticore. It has a wing like bat, face like lion, uh, tail that throws spikes, um, horns, a little bit of fire breath, you know. Man, I don't know, but I guarantee that Roy would have known a lot about that. Roy would, but Roy's not here. Nope. How big are these things? Guy. Oh, they're size large. They take up a ten by ten by ten cube. Mm -hmm. Um, would would since I live in this land, would I mm -hmm. know a little bit about the manticore, like a local legend or like a encounter my people have had with one? Yeah, manticores are fairly rare, fairly solitary creatures. They're almost never encountered in pairs. Um, you would. Give me a history check. Absolutely. Two seconds. Let me find history. See, it's uh, on the left side bam. of your character sheet, but not that far left. Ooh, bam. very good roll. Um, you don't know anything about them breathing fire. That sounds like new information to you, or maybe a lie, or maybe, you know, who knows? Uh, maybe it's a myth, right? But you do know they are capable of flying and flinging um, spikes off of their tails at a pretty good range. And they can kind of um, kite their opponents from the air with these until, um, well, until they run out of tail spikes or until their opponents are dead. And then they can swoop in and rip them apart with bites and claws. Uh, yeah, they're... and I'll I'll tell the um the hobgoblin myth for the origin of the is it did you say a chimera or what was it called again manticore manticore, manticore. Um, is that the uh, the great maw in the sky was hungry one day and it wanted a variety meal and when it ate uh, <laughs> like six or seven dif different creatures all at once um, when it processed them the uh, manticore was born and that uh, that was the origin story of the manticore. That's why you shouldn't mix your meals after a bustle. Oh yeah, it's generally considered very... Uh, you shouldn't eat two types of creature at once for fear that you'll create a, uh, a, new, a new being that could haunt you. I want to know who's out there eating owls and bears at the same time, because that's just weird. The god, of, the god of hunger. He eats everything. Yeah. There's no yeah. god of hunger. The Great Maw eats all. Cypher will give him a look like, eating. don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Droll Rises, any uh, clerics of the Great Maw back in your tribe? Um, 
we typically do not use much in the way of magic. Uh, the Ma is less of a spiritual, a religious belief. It is more of a philosophy about how you should live. Their clerics get the powers from those that they eat. Huh. There were a couple of, you may call them shamans, and the occasional cleric, um, but this was of the smaller goblins. Uh, the god of the maw, his blessing would be to eat you, and so to be his cleric would to die. Would be to, yeah, short ceremony. I heard if you eat a dragon, you get to breathe fire. <laughs> Only if you eat that liver. Do dragons oh. have like a fire? Uh, if you had even one bite land? of the liver of a dragon, it would kill you. No one is sure <laughs> where the dragon fire comes from. Um, do you want to hear about other creatures in Badlands, or you want to sit around make dumb joke? Oh, th we thought you were done, Ostigan. Please, no. No, carry those on. are just river and air creatures. There's all land creature too. Well, we won't. We don't need to worry about those. We won't be on the land. Okay. We're on the land right now. Wait, we're on the land right now. <laughs> yes. Tell us about the Ostigan. Yes. Um, <clears throat> long lizard with six legs whose gaze turns you to stone. We call them basilisks. Uh, we have they them are, back uh, home. They are not so fun. Yes, you, you see statues on side of road or anywhere uh, you know that is bad. Uh, do, do not gaze we, upon them. Uh, but then if you can't see them, you they, you know, they, they bite we you gotta, we gotta, easy. We got a mirror here, Oscar. Anyone got a mirror? <laughs> the just child's uh, story. It, that does not work. No, oh, really? You spend, no, you spend a whole time holding mirror, trying to get creature to look at itself, and it, it just it does not work, and you waste your action, and then and then you die because uh, they have poison too. So no. Uh, uh, you... Draw phrases will say we could turn their eyeballs into mirrors, and they would be forced to look upon their own visage. I sit I look on it. I look at troll braces. Askin, how do you know about the mirror thing? Because back where I, you know, where I'm from, mm -hmm. that's where everyone said they said you carry a you know, mirror for the basilisk if you were rich. The rich Shrugs. people walk around with mirrors. Uh, maybe you have different basilisk. Maybe your people tell story that is uh, not true. Uh, I, how do all you I know? know. Well, I am expert in badlands. This is my job. I, you this see me carry a mirror? <laughs> I'm just saying that's, that's anyone who's tried rude. the mirror, you're saying they've died, so they've not returned. So how do you know? Oh, oh sure. Get, go go back. Get mirror. Uh, it's not worth my time. No, I, I, it's, I, too, it's too I, late now. We should have. I'm just saying that maybe we should have brought one, that's all. I have how never used a mirror on the basilisk to see if it works. Exactly. I don't think it does. I think this is silly child's ploy. I'm just um, saying that if I was a guy, I just would have liked to have known that there was. If I was a creature, before, so I could I, have brought a mirror. I tried to tell exactly. you, and you said no. You said you did not want to hear what was in Badlands. I tried to tell. I didn't expect there to be a basilisk though, because everyone always oh! says bring a mirror for the basilisk, and I can't afford a mirror. I can get a mirror now. Enough well, arguing. Well, if Tell I get us about the next stone. creature. Well, uh, Iron Grip will ask, would would the blindness spell work? And he'll explain about the blindness spell. Would that oh. prevent the basilisk from well, looking you, at us? If you can't see it, well, oh, oh that's a good question. Um, if Is it when a darkness I look at it or spell it looks at me? Well, same thing. When eye contact is made, you know, when you when you see someone and you you feel the flutter. Uh, uh, you know, in, in your gut and your heart. Uh, like the same, except uh, you feel heavy and then uh, you, you turn to stone. Technically after two rounds of saving throws. <laughs> mm. um, now here in Badlands, the um, veil between worlds is thin. The, uh, the, the plane, the world we on, Arcadia, is made up of earth and water and fire and air. And uh, here in Badlands, it is uh, fairly weak, um, especially near Earth Lair. So sometimes elementals come out. Uh, Earth Elemental, Zorn, Salamander, um, you know, mostly Earth, some fire, 
Very little water, very little air. But elemental creatures do show up from time to time. And, um... How are you able to travel this land? Oh, it's we not don't. Sound good. It's a bad but, idea. Yeah. But you're an expert of it. Yeah. <laughs> I shrug. <laughs> well, look, I, it is a specialty. You know, I I am one of the few people who, who do this route. I go carefully, I go slowly. Um, yeah. Well, I'm glad don't you're let here, me die. Well, so don't let me die. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Uh, normally, if I do this run, I, I take no, no other people with me. Um, very small amount of stuff. Specialty equipment is, is different. With so many, it's, it's, this is mess. You try and hide from the birds? Yes. Oh. Does anything ever kill the jellyfish? I don't know. I think maybe crab eat jellyfish? Or maybe jellyfish eat crab. I, I, I do not know. Maybe they they both eat the mold in water. Drugs. Um, this place is weird. Giants of some kind, like uh, ogres, cyclops. Still not, still uh, not done. Oh no, you, you keep talking. How can I get through list when you... When... It's okay. I'm, I'm, Long I'm trip. Going. Long Carry trip. Um, ogres and cyclops and giants of that kind uh, occasionally come here and make lair for a little time and then they leave away or they all die. Uh, so maybe something like that, maybe? Uh, and how does, this place is um, testing grounds for new monsters that gods make. Um, mean gods make mean monsters. Last time I was here, there was a giant insect whose uh, antenna uh, turned my sword to, to ash. So that was very bad. Um, I run very far that day. Very hot. Sounds like a cruel joke. Jax almost have made that one. Oh, it's a very bad monster. Okay, now I'm done. Ah, well, cheers to that. We appreciate your help, and we'll make sure to keep you safe. Yes. Intel uh, is always quite valuable. Well, if I die, uh, I don't know how you get anywhere. You, I mean, this river is confusing. Well, it, it branches. There's low areas. There's sandbars. You don't know which way to take. You, you wander around and you know forever, is uh is is real bad. Yeah. Looks around. I know everyone here is important, but uh, without me, you all die. So keep me alive, please. Okay. In, internally, in like Iron Grip's hierarchy of who's important, like he was at the top, and then it was Cipher, but now this guy's like at the top, and then it's Iron Grip, <laughs> and then it's Cipher. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, Cipher, now you know what's here. We've got a plan for our defense. Um, nice cigarette, Cipher. We, Iron Grip, will speak up and say. The plan should be simple. We will use the hut to conceal ourselves in the wild and uh, protect ourselves from potential attack and prepare for whatever comes. Uh, I will also begin uh, during the daytime setting alarms in the areas around us. Um, I assume I can have more than one alarm spell going? Unless it says otherwise, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, if it's concentration, you can only have one. It's basically like a, let me post it in chat so we can chat about it. This cool little ritual spell, uh, Skadoosh. Um, yeah, it's not a concentration, so yeah. you can make as many of them as you want. And, um, yeah, I will just basically, wherever I think, you know, I'll kind of hang out where our I'll explain this to the party I'll say like here's our position and we're most vulnerable when we're getting attacked from like this direction and I'll discuss this with the party and like we'll lay out like oh this rock if something got to this rock it would be pretty easy to pounce on someone that was walking this way or if something got behind this spike over here it would be able to jump on us this way and if bandits got like the drop on us from this cliff it would be really bad so he'll draw raises will detail a plan setting up alarms nice. like a perimeter um, like a variety of alarms and he'll set them up as audible alarms and each um, he will explain uh, the system of alarms that like the alarm to the north is like it sounds like an 
owl. The alarm to the east sounds like a piranha. <laughs> the alarm to the west <laughs> sounds like, <laughs> you know, a deer. And like every cardinal direction has its own animal noise. And then if it is a mixture of those two cardinal directions, it will have. And so not only will you be able to identify the direction based on where the sound is coming from, but you'll also be able to identify it even if the direction is a little bit messed up, you'll know that at least, okay, that's to my, you know, east, but I know that's northwest of the camp's position. Mm -hmm. Nice, okay. All right, well, that sounds good for while we're here, but I'm worried, you know, I was thinking about what Ostigan said about that manticore thing. think. What if it turns up when we're on the boat? Just um, throwing its little needles at us, what are we going to do? Did you bring shield? I've got a shield, yeah. Do you have protection fighting style? No. Oh, that would be very nice. Well, Razor is familiar, can always scout ahead. We need to keep our eyes open, our eyes peeled and ready. I think it's unlikely that we just get ambushed out of nowhere. I yeah. hope so. A draw okay. Razor will discuss with the party about whether or not they would rather have my familiar be a fish in the water or be a bird in the sky. I think a bird It'll in the sky. Bird. I'm more worried yeah. about giants and manscores than I am about jellyfish. I go I'll take... to the tiny hut and I take the axe and I try to attack it. Can I attack it? No. I will post it. I mean, you can make the attack, but I do believe it is... Like... Invulnerable. Um... Creatures and objects within the dome can move through it freely. All other objects uh, can't. Oh, I suppose since you were inside the dome when it was cast, you can swing your axe right through the dome. Got it. But then yes. if so... Interesting. Okay. If we see a manticore in the distance, I say we park the boat, we cast the tiny hut, and we just wait it out. It would take uh, ten minutes. One minute. It's a ritual spell. You don't have to cast it as a ritual, right? <laughs> I would sure. need time to rest to prepare it. Uh, you Understood. don't have it prepared, yeah. Even if we could do that, the best of us could camp out in front of the hut, right? That's a possibility. I think we need a better plan than just to wait it out if we encounter yeah. it. I believe you can use physical ranged attacks from inside the hut to make something go away. Not magical, but physical. So you can shoot a bow out. You could yeah. uh, have your familiar on the outside so we could know where it is mm -hmm. and shoot from inside the hut. It's pretty smart. I think we'll be okay. Steer Bear, how much longer till the boat's fixed? <sighs> Let me check I, on Ethan. I don't, I don't... I go outside. I don't know about your group, but for me and Drove Razor, I think we'll be okay. Has not won us any battles. Correct. Um, I just don't do... think we can sit here and prepare for uh, random events to happen. I heard once about this group who tried to prepare for a lava pool in the ground, and that never happened. But they spent <laughs> six hours talking about it. <laughs> six hours and then, in three weeks. We should Easiest at least have ever a very made. basic, <laughs> a very basic game plan for if we find a manticore. My shield spell will, if I'm in the front, protect us from the majority of its uh, ranged attacks. Oh, that's a good um, point. Maybe my ice storm spell could help us with that, actually. Or the, so, um... everyone should get behind me in the event that we find a manticore. And everyone should have a ranged attack, and I'll, like, give a look to Cassian. Like, I have a bow. what's your plan? Um, I show you my shoulder with the bow wait, strapped to it. Isn't that longbow strength based? Dex. I believe. I, thought... I think all ranged weapons are... I oh, maybe short, it's I like a, a fighting bow. style that lets you use strength on a longbow. Yeah, yeah sounds right. Uh, yeah, I can like summon winds and stuff, which gives ranged attacks disadvantage, so that could work too. Yeah. Okay, I check on Ethan, Neil. So I come up here and say, uh, Ethan, how are we hmm. going with the repairs? It's been 20 minutes. Uh-huh, yeah, it's but gonna... how's it going? It'll, uh, it'll take a day or two. Okay. Any... Can I help or... You got this. Yeah, can you hold this right here? Uh, An extra sure. set of hands would be real nice. Yeah. You fixed one of these before, Ethan? Never. Yeah, me neither. But uh, it's pretty straightforward, though. You know, there's a hole, you put the wood in the hole. 
That's it, really, isn't it? Well, I mean, making it watertight is kind of a hard deal, right? You gotta. I mean, I know we got a little tar here, but you know, getting these joists together—it's just. Ugh. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'd be nice if we uh, had uh, proper tools. Saw would be great. Having to, you know, cut this board with uh, just a knife. It's a slow process. That's not great. I've got a. I have an axe. I've got a flail. Yeah, we've got an axe too. We could use an axe. Well, yeah, axe is likely to, you know, break it, not cut it neatly. It, it, true, it, yeah. Look, it'll take a couple days. Okay, just let me plug away. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, who wants to make our encounter check roll today? I do. Mr. Mooten, D100. I'm going to stay out here with Ethan. Before we do the encounter check, uh, I would have had the stuff to, like, recast my Find Familiar, right? That's not something I know, like... Because, like, all you need is, like, a little brazier and a couple of little bits of spell components. Like, well, we you were, need like, a, a large brazier, which is actually quite heavy and big. Um, does the party still have any of their tripods left? I think maybe not. I just don't think we would bring them on this boat trip. Yeah. Unless you would have stated that you needed them. Well, uh, I would have explained... Let's check what the boat says. I would have explained to the party that, you know, find familiar is, like, a really good scaling tool. And if we want to be able to change the familiar on fly, like I discussed before we went... Yeah. Um... It depends on how large of a braze, brazier we need. Um, yeah, it weighs ten pounds. It's a, a very, it's a big enough object that it's a pain in the ass to carry. It's you know three feet tall, one, um, and it's to be a fair, foot and we, a half wide at the base. Mm -hmm. We brought carved ivory statues of the big gods that weighs ten pounds. Mm -hmm. I would but think that, that fits in like need... a nice little carrying case. Oh. You know, the, the 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 tripod is it doesn't bend. It's not like collapsible. It's uh, tripods are. Well, Check here's the thing. On the sheet, but there's no if weight we, item to it. But I can if add we, weight if we weren't bringing a brazier, I, a brazier, I wouldn't have switched him to a fish because Makes a sense. bird is infinitely more useful, right? Yeah. Tripods are on the sheet. It's fine. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah, then you have a tripod, and um, since the components for Find Familiar actually have a GP requirement, um, it can't be cast from an arcane focus or a component pouch. So you're only going to have a limited number of these castings with you. Um, yeah, I, I would say we probably brought like five castings for this trip. Cool. So why don't you put castings of Find Familiar on your character sheet and uh, bring it down to four so you can cast the Familiar as a bird. I, I would say three because I've already cast it once on this trip. So I've got three more. Oh, okay. I thought it perfect. Perfect. All right. First day on ship repairs goes great. Good. So if I'm standing around in my armor, am I having to consistently kind of, like, wet myself? Every now and then you have to dip something in the water and dump it on yourself um, because it's hot out here and you need consistent cooling. Okay. Yeah. Next day, Mr. Mooten, roll me another D100. He knows I'm due for a small one. Hey, do your worst, you know. Uh, Jared else is due for a small one. Your, your wife? Mom? I was going to say bitch. Yawn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Roll me uh, you, a you fucking D20. Got him. <laughs> Does he want high or low? He needs to know. Um, I don't... Th this is not... A, this is what category of creature. Not what creature, but what category. So this one doesn't really matter. Are oh, the categories like land, air, and water? Sure. Yeah, more or less. D20 on. A D motherfucking 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm smelling a. Th oh. Boom! It's fine. Nice. That's it's no encounters the right there. That's, what we wanted. That's the good one. And Jamie. A D20, right. please. Does he want higher low on this one? I'm going smack down the middle. 10. Oh, fuck. Eye is oh. usually good. Yeah. Usually um, being the operative word. This might even be a boon for us. Yeah, maybe it is. It could. We rolled an encounter, we rolled an 8, and then we rolled a 19. Well, we the thing is, no matter what it is, we kill it, we eat its liver, we get stronger, so <laughs> we it's win-win. True. Um, yeah, I'm going to join Drollraiser's religion. What, what do you call your religion, Drollraiser? 
Um, the church think about that. Hungry, hungry hippos. <laughs> I would say it is the the Great Maw is the primary deity. Um, what would you call that? Like the worship of the hunger, or like giants and ogres are sacred because they eat so much. Whales are sacred because they consume so much. Anything that eats a lot is really sacred. So what about, what um, about de devourism? Um, the subshoot of communism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, oh, devourism is okay. I would say the Great Maw is the name of the deity, um, which, you know, pick. It's pick probably got a hobgoblin name, it actually right? Not yeah, like it's definitely a got a hobgoblin name. name. Yeah. But I was like, the best translation would be um, the the hunger. Very like nice. capital T, capital H, the hunger. The hunger. And he'll like explain that sometimes in battle, like hobgoblins are overcome with the need to eat. Like it's like a almost like a berserker rage. Sorry, Quobi, did we get since we're rolling encounters? Did we get a night's rest? Uh, you have had one night's rest. Yes, you can expend hit dice. You get short rest things back, and everyone gains one hit die. Awesome. I will do my arcane recovery. Skadoosh. Nice. Um, hmm. action surge, second wind's back. Cool. Boom, boom. Let's go. Um, boom. so on this next day here, you've got your alarm set up, and um, people are working on the boat, people are hanging out in the hut, when one of your alarms goes off. I've also got a raven in the sky. Excellent. Well, the alarm goes off. You can immediately use an action to look through the eyes of your raven. And you can see that there is a person um, coming up from the, uh, coming down from the north, uh, from the direction you are heading. Um, they Male look female. They have no hair on the top of their head. So it looks to be a incoming male. Um, they are wearing brightly colored clothing. They've got like a, a purple cloak. Uh, uh, you know, a very light t-shirt, uh, not t-shirt, but long sleeve shirt. They've got like a red sash with a bag attached to it and, um, you know, big hip bag on their side um, and uh, you know, fancy beard. Are they beard. like hurrying? Would no, they're you, walking. Would you like a raven perception check or do I just see him? You can just see him. There's not much going on in the Badlands. If you know, you look at the ground around here, a person stands out like a sore thumb. And he uh, hears the alarm, does he... Oh yeah, everyone, the guy will hear the alarm. Um, yes. I guess when the alarm goes off, I go running up this passageway then. Mm -hmm. I'll go, yeah, because we know where the area is. He explained right. which and piece I, it is, yeah. so yeah, I'll go with him. Uh, and the person to... will sort of drop low to the ground and take a, like a bit of a hidden stance behind a rock, looking around as this alarm rings out in the Badlands. Uh, do I see them? Check? I will use my Raven's mimicry ability to make the noise of a lion roaring nearby. He has to pass a DC 10 insight check to not believe there's a lion nearby. Like what pushing really? <laughs> what? Really? Can yeah, they do yeah. this? Yeah, that's like the Raven familiar. They got a mimicry ability. That's awesome. Where is that stated in the uh, find familiar text? So when you make a find familiar, you actually get the stat block of the animal. You can't attack, you can't do any of their attacks, but if they have like little abilities like mimicry or like swimming or whatever. I don't um, know if you can do a lion though. Is this a baby crying or an animal chittering? Oh, I'll do like an animal chittering, sorry. I okay, miss, yeah, I miss a lion's miss pretty, pretty <laughs> big I'll, for, I'll uh, make, for a raven. I'll make it sound like there's a person whispering near him to distract him. Um, I will roll this in secret. So do yeah, I see him so taking cover behind this rock or? Probably. I mean, I think he's, I don't know the exact place where the alarms were set. I think maybe they're a little bit further away than this. Maybe not. You do have to spend, what is it? 10 minutes setting each one and they're only a 20 by 20 cube. So maybe they are pretty close. Uh, maybe it does go right along here. So yeah. I think as you notice, as you hear the alarms and everyone's looking around, the creature in question makes a stealth check. Um, it's a pretty good stealth check. I don't think you see him, actually. 
The Raven will see him from above. Perception. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, way yeah, better the, than that. The Raven will kind of circle, um, ideally at like whatever the maximum distance it can be from me, from wherever I am. I think that's 100 like, feet. Yeah, so it'll be like whatever the triangular of that is. It's like flying nearby, but trying to stay out of range of like easy ranged attacks. And it's kind of like okay. looping back and forth. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I get, I think I like get here first as Cassian's coming out and I'll say like, um, like surround him basically. Or he's up there and I move up this way and shout like, hey, who goes there? Show yourself. Sorry, was, was Droll Razor out loud and actually able to tell us that it was a person that set off the alarm? Yeah, Droll Razor's okay. near everyone. Everyone's kind of oh, hanging out together, funny. so he can close Same his sure. eyes, see through the the monster, not the monster, the bird, and then it's call back to you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. After after that, I would come out of like Raven Vision and I'll inform s- them that there's a guy on the cliff and it's a guy who's alone and he's bald. Hey, Baldy, come out. Um, slowly, poking his head out, is this person. Um, Fairly bald-looking feller. Um, puts his hands you, in the air. What are you doing out here? The same thing you are, I'm sure. Hey, hey, come no closer, sir. I, I mean, no harm. You need, you need help? No. Well, Do you need help? We're, we're merely passing through. I didn't know anyone lived out here. God, gods be damned, no one could live out here. No, no, I'm I'm passing through myself. Would you... You want some like food? a ride? Have some food? Um... I appreciate your hospitality. How many are you? I give them Cypher will come out and just nod like at him. seven or eight? Eight. Mm-hmm. Eight? That's a I lot. I my of... weapon away. Yeah, my weapon will be away, too. He, he visibly a... relaxes when the weapons are put away. Yeah. I, have like a wizard. I don't want to be out here when a basilisk shows up. You can either come to town or I guess be on your way. And I'll start to retreat. Yeah, same. Mm-hmm. Oh, I can't like back off here. I keep an eye on him. Um, I'm on him here. Yeah, he may have we'll... information or wealth. You're just going to let him leave? He'll make his way down and come well, on as over he, to as your he comes hut. past me. I walk. I, can I walk next to him as he's walking along? Sure. Yeah. So, what's your name? Cornelius Snellington. Nice to meet you, Cornelius. I'm Stermia. I offer him a hunt. He takes your hand and shakes it. Um, gives you a you know nice broad grin. Or a handshake you have. Indeed. Makes his way over <laughs> towards the rest of the party. Uh, and. I see there's some sort of magician in your group. Look at that. He points to your impenetrable dome and he gestures back to the alarm sounds that were going off. Um, he knows probably too much. He is a danger. Multiple alarms since Calm they're down, scattered all the way around. around. Yes, this uh, this hobgoblin is our wizard. His name's uh, Iron Grip. Ah. Uh, Iron Grip will narrow his eyes at Cornelius. Completely not trusting this bald man walking alone in Kazu infested wildlands. This man is more dangerous than he looks. Oh, I'm certain about that. Cypher is also very distrusting here, and she will just observe. So, not why are you uh, traveling I... the Badlands, Cornelius? Is that Iron Grip the Jailer? That's him. Uh, Have you heard of him? We'll I've... take a step back and continue to glance suspiciously at Cornelius. I've made some money off of you in Scales Vale. <laughs> Maybe a decade ago. And always always a pleasure to meet a fan. Yes, you must be um Cypher's Speed Slash. Quick claw. Close though. Ugh. Are you sure it wasn't Speed Slash? I I'm a big fan of alliteration. You know what? It might have been Speed Slash. We did go through many names. Mm. I was grabby for a while. <laughs> oh, I, rem- I, I remember your grabby era. It was more humiliating for the opponents. That's what I liked about it. <laughs> you would just grab them and hold on to them? I <laughs> had not yet fully learned uh, the common tongue, and so I named myself as a childhood. 
<laughs> do you remember? Do you remember the wood elf that we killed? And the last thing that he screamed was, "I can't believe I died to Grabby." <laughs> I asked the slave master if I could have his liver, but they wouldn't let me. He didn't go to heaven then. Nah, the ground ate him. Awesome. Mm. Well, tell us about yourself, Cornelius Snellington. I'll oh. offer. I don't know. Do we have wine? Maybe a little bit. Probably a small supply. I'll give him a little glass of wine. Because he's a guest. That's what we That's do. Great. We're fucking nobles. Steermere's not. But uh, I am. Uh, he will and by take God, the... I'm going to uphold this hospitality. That's around these fantastic. savages. That is just fantastic. He takes the wine, has a few sips of it. <sighs> that is so refreshing. Oh, it's just wonderful. Uh, well, I'm coming from Lofton. Um, long way around. Uh, the, the hills and mountains are, are a little dangerous, so I tend to skirt near the Everglades and then come down through the Badlands. Uh, let me just say that the, the dwarves and I, they're not a big fan of merchants traveling through their territory. They exact a heavy... Um, what is the term for import taxes or pass-through taxes? It's um, more. It's a little better to walk around by myself. You must Are be you quite a, a capable fighter to be able to travel these lands alone. Well, there, there's flight, there's fight, there's posture and submit. Uh, there's four stratagems for encounters. Mm-hmm. And which one do you prefer? I like to pick my battles carefully. Use each one as appropriate. But, um... You know, the, the, the Badlands won't traverse themselves. So... Have you... Have you run into a Basilisk before? Maybe. I saw a large creature with six legs going into a cave maybe a month ago, um, just on the other side of the hills, but I didn't get close enough to to tell what it was. I'm no fool. Our group six got legs. ambushed by a group of Kazu just mm. yesterday, and we had a close fight with them. It was quite the scary encounter. They can be feisty, those Kazu. He looks yes. a little nervous. Do you have um, any tips for dealing with Kazu? Bird people. Or any land. other creatures of this land? I seem like you have a wizard and the warriors. Maybe a cleric? Drugs. Sounds like you have it handled. You seem well, like a uh, scholar. Am I, uh, am I picking up on that correctly? Merchant. Tri uh, trade or traveler. Ah, mm -hmm. do you have anything for sale? Kind of looks you have around. no wagon. In in this place, this is where you you want to do business. I, I don't like think do I have tiny uh, hut. I, I I don't think I have anything that you would want. By small fineries, things that are easy to carry and quite expensive. I'll show him. Uh... Trade that actually. Everyone. Anything magical? No. You would say that if you had it, knowing that we would kill you for it. At least I we would. We have things don't to be, trade. Uh, don't be stupid, Iron Grip. He didn't mean that. I'll go get the bag of um, the 20 assorted earrings, the bangles, mm -hmm. and I'll show. We actually have wealth and uh, we're on a. We're on a quest to save someone who's been uh, lost a long time. Any magical items that we could trade with you, uh, we would be more than willing to pay for. I know that you've probably never met an honest man ever in the Badlands, but uh, I guess today's your lucky day. <laughs> this might not be the most trustworthy and ideal setting when I'm outnumbered eight to one, surrounded by magic users. I feel a little uncomfortable. I feel like the hobgoblin keeps eyeing me and wants to eat my liver. 
Um, and so if you... He does, but he won't. He, he does, but yeah, he won't. <laughs> you're free to you're free to go if you'd like. Um, we have uh, things to trade, and I'd be interested in hearing. But uh, in order in order to prove uh, that he can't eat his liver, Iron Grip will say, "I would like to call a vote on whether or not we eat this man's liver." And he'll raise his hand. He immediately steps back. Everybody else keeps their hands down. Listen, uh, Cornelius, <laughs> you if you feel today. if you feel uncomfortable, then feel free yes. to leave. Thank you. Goodbye. Uh, and he will trigger your alarms on the way out and look back over his shoulder many times and make like a quick hurried uh, escape from the... the, the I'm going to give him a wave goodbye. Uh, he'll give you Cypher, a hasty wave as he... Cypher having experienced dozens of times that a social interaction has ended because Drove Razor wanted to eat someone. <laughs> yeah. Just, Happens more than he's like... Very used to this interaction. We'll just return to sharpening our blades and just look out Could for I this. And... Give you a persuasion check, Neil. Uh, maybe not to go back in time, but maybe like the thought is like rattling around in the person's brain or something like that. Which uh, to do? To like I trade with them. Times. Mm. Like yeah, give me uh, a persuasion check, and I will oppose it by <laughs> their... No, oh, it's no never one. mind. It's fine. It's fine. It yep. fits the encounter. They peace out, and our party is left to repair the boat, which will be done by the end of today. And tomorrow, you can we set can off on your journey. Little um, point of note, I think in 5e, the tiny hook ends if the wizard leaves. So That's that whole interaction oh. will mean you've got to recast it. Well, I would only be casting the tiny hut at nighttime unless we were specifically setting up for a defense. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Um, well, I think Ostigan gets to spend a hit die then. So he should I be will. at full. Since we're never going to see him again, can you give us the rest of his story and how he <laughs> went it. off? We might see him again. You know what? He'll tell us in the after show. Yeah, Patreon.com slash sure. save or die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Wait, why I don't we see go... how good I would have cooked his liver. Oh, damn. It would have been good. Okay. Been good. Why don't we go uh, to... we go to break, I just want to do a quick plug. Um, we have a new merch store for our save or die stuff. Um, it's on Cameo. So it's going to be merch.cameo.com slash store slash save or die. Um, there's links everywhere. If you're a Patreon, you can go to the Discord. In the pinned messages of the general Save or Die channel, there's a 20% off coupon code that you can click and use on any of the merchandise items that you'd like. If not, um, yeah, check them out. Thanks. Catch you guys on the side of a break. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Lazarus Expedition. <clears throat> Our party is going to set off back to the Badlands on their boat, and Mr. Mooton, it's time to make the next D100 roll. 29. Ooh, yeah. 29. You have triggered an encounter of some kind. Fine, it's oh. going to be a good one. Just good. roll well. Roll well. That's what they say. That's what they always say. Uh, Nick. Yes. I'm going to get a D20. Five. Okay. That's fine. Now, the music yeah. suggests otherwise. We got one more roll, and we just need it to be a high one, and then it's a good encounter. Um, <laughs> can I get a D twenty from Potato McWhiskey and from Pokemon Challenges? Okay, two twenties. Yeah, I'm rolling for how many Manticores are going to appear. Uh, that's <clears throat> seven Manticores. That's not good. Seven, seven Manticores and thirteen. Yeah, that's we got a bad encounter, Giants. lads, but it's not the worst encounter we could have had. They add up to 20, though, so. Okay. It's XP. Right, right. It's That's that's what I keep telling myself. It's <clears throat> XP. It's a gang of giants. And that's probably the worst thing of all the stuff you said. <laughs> yeah. That's a, a reasonable thing to think. <laughs> it's the fucking trollery. <laughs> it's come back for my head. I think that is my most effective monster <laughs> of all time. Yeah. 
It's got a good kill ratio, hasn't it? That is so good. I just have to move all of our people onto their appropriate tokens and spots. Uh, so, what's it like in the boat? In fact, what is the, the marching order in the boat? Because the boat, you know, it's not very big. Um, clearly, well, we Ostigan's in the back. Ostigan and Ethan are in the back with the cleric kind of back there. Mm -hmm. Then it was... Uh, I think... Stiermir, um, me, and then the other... Stiermir is towards the middle. the middle because he yeah. has the power to make people not sink, so he's in the position yeah. that is most likely to fall off the boat. I'd say Cypher, uh, if, if someone has to be more at the front, it's probably Cypher. Um, uh, Iron Grip would be near the back to protect the civilians from, like, Manticore spikes with the shield Cassian spell. He help. would, like, try to stand in the front of it. Yeah. So Cassian or Cypher is in the very front. Which one? Cassian. Yeah. I'm the leader of the expedition. Gotta be up there. Got it. All right. Well... You're in your boat, and there are these jellyfish that have been around you. They were around you before. You see them from time to time, and then they disappear again. And this is one of those moments where the clustering of jellyfish is, like, uncomfortable. Like, there's too many of them nearby. It's, like, actually getting hard to move through the water because you keep bumping up against them over and over again. Uh. And so your progress has, like, slowed as you're having to, like, use rods in the boats to push the jellyfish physically away from you. It's getting, it's messy. And the water looks extremely unfriendly at this moment in time. But that's not Maybe. what is triggering our encounter here. Oh. What's triggering our encounter is the appearance Say it, it's a giant. It's a giant manticore. Better not be a giant. We found the Tarask. Oh, fuck. Hmm. That can't be right. Oh, yeah, it's totally right. Um, the appearance of 2d4 flying snakes. Mr. Moon, would you roll me 2d4? 2d4 flying snakes. Jesus. Yes. Um, now, they are large creatures, uh, and they are very brightly colored, so you can see them from a long way off. So we're going to put them on the far side of our map here. Oh, how big are we talking here? Uh, they're like large. 10 feet long with giant wings. Holy fuck. That's terrifying. Yes. A little bit. Where is the boat? Oh, I see. Yeah, you guys are way uh, at the bottom of the map. There's nowhere to, like, pull off, huh? Listen, now, you're you're each... in some awkward... Yeah, like, with all these sticks and rocks and uh, bony bits, it's hard to pull off. And then there's all these jellyfish in front of you, so you're already sort of in a, a slowed, slogged position here. Um, and these things are flying this way. So... Are these, are these the ones that again. make electricity? Yes. Yes. Um, but... I'm going to give you maybe one minute before they arrive at this position on the map. And when they get to this position on the map, we're going to need to go in initiative order because uh, they can probably close that distance in, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds. Awesome. So, we see flying serpents. What do you recommend? Should we lay down in the boat? Back dead? Uh, I think that uh, you should kill them before they arrive. And um, he looks to the water. I would not go in the water right now. This is very, very bad. A uh, someone has um, make ice come from sky. Uh, go. Someone, someone make ice come from sky last time. What? Oh, that was lightning. Well, that's not good. Lightning does not help. They, they um. They're not hurt by immune. It. Yeah. Uh, Is no, there anywhere no. we can pull the boat off to? He will push the boat forward, and if anyone wants... Actually, it would have to be Mr. Moon, because you're the one in the front. Although, I guess anyone could get past you, really. 
Um, you can make a dex check to hop off the boat. DC 10 dex check to hop off the boat and into the, onto this um, rock up here. How long does it take? The party. No, to, I say we will cast in 10 minutes, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I think we just gotta um, try and fight them, right? Yeah. Uh, I'll explain to the party that I have absorbed elements. Uh, so I can... Oh, yeah, I've got that too. I'll Put it in chat so we can see bow. what it does. Uh, basically, it's a... It's like counter... It's like a shield, but for... Uh... Yeah, but... You keep reading spells and abilities wrong, so... Oh, sorry. It basically allows you to take half damage up. on a Got elemental it. attack, and then when you next use an attack, you will do a little bit of extra damage of that type, which is useless against these guys, because I'll be absorbing thunder damage. Got it. You have resistance Nick, to the trigger. concentration for an hour. I'm not casting it, because it's my last level three spell slot, and I think I'm better off trying to do damage. Uh, well, I could um... fog cloud, or I could do, like... Sleet storm around me, I think but it's gonna. Fog would be, a fog cloud could be good here. Yes, immediately yeah, fog cast, cloud. Yeah. Cast fog Quickly. cloud. Okay, yeah, I cast fog cloud on, on us. Okay. Well, uh, I do believe it is time to roll the initiatives. Right, I already got the fog cloud off. This isn't my turn yes. right now. Yes, yeah. you got the fog cloud off pre turn. Could you give me a raven token when you get a chance? Yes, absolutely. Holy shit, these snakes rolled incredible. Yeah, they did. A high dex, that's fine. I got 18 dex. Well, I hope the fog cloud works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what if they just start casting lightning bolts at us? I hope there's a fog cloud, that's why. What's the size of fog cloud? Yes, uh, it is. 20 foot radius. It's a 40 foot diameter. Um, so this, I believe. 40 foot? Perfect. A little bit bigger? I, uh, could use, I could use a higher spell slot to make it bigger, but... No, yeah, it needs to be a bit bigger now, lots, yeah. There you go. That's, that's good. Now put it on us. And uh, put Fog Cloud in chat for us. Mm -hmm. Concentration up to one hour, 20 foot radius fog centered on a point in range, spreads around corners, areas heavily obscured, lasts for the duration or until a wind of moderate or greater speed disperses it. Mm. What does heavily obscured mean? I think it means that you cannot we can't be seen. See, and they can't see us. Everyone, remain quiet. Ah, uh, the raven will dive down into the cloud onto my shoulder. Like... Oh, no, oh, I'll dismiss really. it as an action. Sorry, that's what I'll do. Oh, I didn't mean to. Just Much found to your it. raven token. Fine. Fine. <laughs> so you can re-summon that back without the spell. It's just you need the spell to change the form. Yes, correct. Okay, As cool. long as it doesn't get killed. Yeah, yeah. Nice. I have a... Can our, um, our cleric cast Bless on us? I don't think we want to cast any spells I, right I now, think yeah. we just want to be quiet, yeah. We just want to be quiet as a mouse. I mean, Those she could good rules. Okay. She could have uh, before, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, our winged snakes will come on by. You can't see them anymore. You can't see through the heavy obscurement. Um, but you do hear their wings as they get closer to you. Um, mm -hmm. And you will hear them actually in and around the cloud of fog. You won't be able to see them, um, but there is this like flapping sound and there is this um, like static buildup, like a stormy day where the hair kind of like feels a little pringly on your neck. And if you like reach for your sword or, you know, touch something metal, there's like a slight zap or shock between you and it. But let's roll to see if our snakes. <laughs> this is fucking sketchy. Let's as see fuck. if we die. 
Um, and their perception. Oh. Okay, I just need to read the snake passage. What's it like in the fog cloud? Is it silent? Is there conversation? Oh, it's uh, silence. Yeah. It's fucking silent. I think um, heavily obscured makes you automatically fail sight based perception checks. Mm hmm. Definitely. Okay, awesome. But noise based ones, maybe not so much. Could also cast, I don't know, I can't have two concentration spells, can I? Yeah. Just mm -hmm. gonna cast silence, but. Imagine you try to cast. Imagine you try to fucking cast. And the fog cloud just goes. Yeah. Whoops. Um, well, they they hang out and flop around for maybe five minutes before leaving, and um, fuck yeah, you, you can hear the sound slowly fade away, and then they are gone. I will resummon my raven and send it up out of the fog cloud yeah. after a couple minutes. Yeah, the, the raven the can see here. these brightly colored flying snakes in the distance, um, you know, fading away, heading northward. And uh, that's are they fine. Uh, I agree. Are they gone? Uh, they are heading to the north, the way that we are going, but they have left for now. Inverse crab man. All right. I uh, I guess I'll cancel my spell. Yeah. Austin, let's go. And the party keeps going. I'm gonna say thank you to the jellyfish. Um, I actually think the jellyfish are helping us. I don't think they're doing anything wrong. I think when the jellyfish are clustering, there's some shit going down. Why they would that help us? Because they're trying to warn us, bro. Mm, no. They hunger. Tell me they from worship now them all. on Koibu when the jellyfish are starting to like cluster or anything like that. Okay. Uh, to prove a point to Cassian, Draw raises theories that they also worship the Great Maw, as all non-semi-sentient creatures do. He'll drop a piece of meat into the water and see what the jellyfish do. They are sentient, though. Mm. A sacrifice to them. Well, how do smart. we? How do you... we know they're sentient if they don't speak? That's a fantastic question. Um, but uh, as you reach over and try to drop some food in the water, a jellyfish tentacle will sort of whoosh out of the water at you, rolling a natural one, by the way. Um, and you're able to pull your hand back well in time, but one of these tentacles did sort of lash out at you when your hand went over the boat and the little piece of meat falls into the water. Um, and it's murky. You can't see that deep down, but you do see... It slow, like it brushes against some of these little tendrils, which then kind of wrap around it and pull it. It's brought it into the jellyfish and slowly consumed and digested. Maybe you're right. They do want to eat us. They worship the bar. Let's get going. This place can be the creeps. <laughs> you will notice some clusterings of jellyfish from time to time, but they don't seem to be corresponding with other monster clusters. There will be periods of water where there are no jellyfish to be seen. And then there are times where you don't think there are any, but then like one just bobs to the surface. Like it must have been two or three feet down, just just below where you could see with all the algae and everything. Um, so it's hard to tell. But they don't seem to only swarm when monsters are coming. Um, they seem Pokemon. to be reacting to the, um, the movements of the boat, perhaps. Like, I try maybe, like, throwing a rock beyond where some of them are and seeing if they'll move towards that. They give me a really good investigation check, because the boat is moving and the jellyfish are generally pretty slow. You're generally moving quite a bit faster than they are. Um, I'll do insights instead of investigation. No, this is an investigation Insights check. into the nature of a, an this animal is I don't This is collecting clues. Um, no. Classic, Nick. Yeah. Argues for a dice. Neil says no. Rolls poorly. <laughs> the, roll, <laughs> the, the modifier wouldn't have mattered. Uh, Jan, can yeah. I get a D100 from you, sir? Always. Oh, come on. I'm ready for it. I would have got a you 10 on last insights. Time. I know, but I got a good, I got a good D100 coming. 87 on this. Okay. I'm just you saying, know, I've got it's... high insight and low investigation. I've I... done about five investigation checks and no insight checks. Okay, sorry. Just, it's time for know. him to give you a roll then. Well, investigation is usually person on person and you have done investigation checks. So you lawyered yourself into one last session. Okay. 
Uh, so, yeah, but, but I have to fight for it, though. Well, just do more, you know, human interaction and less ignoring people and investigate in, investigating your environment. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have spoken over Yana anyway. Carry on. Can I investigate Stirmir to ascertain the quality of his liver? Yeah, give me an insight check. Cup? That would be insight. <laughs> Hold on, boys. We're getting um, a liver check right now. Boom. Oh, it's good. It's good. Yeah, he looks tasty. Mm. I just said uh, from now on, I want Sturmer to just understand that Iron Gripper started to look at him with like the same kind of hunger that like a child looks at a chicken tendy. But I'll ask. Uh... Is that like romantic in Hobgoblin, or is that? <laughs> No, it's kind of like I want it, like I want to eat it. Uh, oh, um, can I can I get a D twenty from Jamie? You can. Give me a twenty. We need a big one here. Boom. Oh, we're fucked. That's a four. That's a four. Wait, he might need another D twenty though. That's I'm gonna just need. Category. Hold on. I'm gonna need two more D twenties. One from Nick and one from Mr. Mooton. Come on, Nick. We need a twenty. <laughs> They're all oh, back. It's so fucked. <laughs> We're fucked. <laughs> you are actually not fucked at all. Quite the opposite. <laughs> um, you see on your boat in the Badlands, but not close enough to be a threat to you, a basilisk. You see two basilisks just sort of cruising along the ground, um, moving their six legs and kind of scuttling slowly. It looks like they're headed towards the river, but like at a spot you've already passed behind you. Um, and it comes up to the river and just dips its head down and drinks from the water for a little while. And the other one will come and drink from the water for a little while. And then they'll just head back into the Badlands. I'll look to the sky and uh, say, Roy, did you see that? You would have loved this, buddy. <laughs> you really would. Do you think <clears throat> uh, it's messed up, Droll Razor, that we didn't need our, we need our uh, fallen comrades who died? Um... Well, everything gets eaten um, in By the great earth. In the earth, there are tiny creatures uh, made of mouths that eat all of the dead. But it is more. <laughs> He's kind of right. <laughs> that is so accurate and so disturbing. <laughs> um, and those are servants of the maw. Correct, but it is. It would have been more holy for you to have eaten. Would you um, like us to eat you if you fall? Uh, we have not <laughs> earned that right together yet. I nod. Well, another day passes. Everyone, short rests, get back. Hit dice, come back. I think everyone is probably near you're full adding your spells on back. hit dice. Yeah. All right, so are we, well. are we getting out of the boat and doing little hut little huts. rests? Little huts. Yeah, I think so, at night. Yeah. At night, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. There's another arcane recovery, boys. We're almost back to full spells. Nice. The power of wizards right there. Mm -hmm. Damn right. Mmm. Mmm. Keep the jellyfish away of everything. Those are sentient jellyfish. Those are Not sentient. Be nice to them. Well, they can be sentient and stupid. What's Have you met end? people? Um... <laughs> I'd argue those people aren't sentient. <laughs> Where is our... Yeah, I did it. I did the thing. Okay, the next day, as we're traveling, the collection of small little channels seem to be coming together, and the river begins to widen. And Ostigan tells you that this is the sign that you are most of the way through the Badlands. Not all the way through, but you're beyond the halfway point now. Are we beyond that big cave that we were warned about? No. The cave is up ahead. It is so soon what? to be here. What is the plan? Well, something may live there. Maybe not. Uh, I, guess we'll I am guy. Roll for it. <laughs> you are, you are, you are warriors. Um, if it's uh, something like Hydra, and it is not in water, we just sail by. If it is something like dragon, I think we all die. 
Um, so... Dragons are intelligent. We can talk to them. You think there could be a dragon in there? He shrugs. It's big cave in scary badland place. Um, gods are not always nice. You see how many gods have come to Earth lately? So many. You know? And they seem like nice gods, but... You know, Martha, god of creation, she create monsters. Hmm? She build all the monsters of the world. Not always um, that nice. Yeah. Martha. Anger. Martha is the great maw? Tell me more. Well, I mean, Malchus says, Martha, sister of mine. Um, you know, sister wife. Let us make humans. I have idea. I want creatures that can do anything, but don't do anything very well and very adaptable. So uh, help me make humans. And so now there are humans. And they're... We, we do everything and anything, but nothing great. Uh, Cypher we are... will laugh at the, the human stereotype and like <laughs> give like Droll Razor a, like an elbow. <laughs> <laughs> He's underselling it slightly. I mean, you oh. know, ma so, so Martha makes all the things, but all the other gods are the ones who come and say, Martha, I need this, help me make this. And then okay, she helps I'm... them make that. Enough with um, the philosophy. There's a dragon up ahead. Anger, how far can your raven go and check out the cave? Uh, about a hundred feet. Um, but do <laughs> not fret. Fuck that. Uh, in an attempt to make the party feel better about the threat of a dragon, Iron Grip will explain that the larger and more powerful the creature that eats you, the higher the circle of heaven you get into. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic. Religion. I'm making a cleric <laughs> of this religion. Yeah, All that's right. pretty good. <laughs> well, okay, well, we uh, cross our fingers. As we approach the fork in the river, and as we approach the great cave, your raven from high in the sky, 100 feet above you, can see pretty far. And it can see that standing outside of the cave is a cyclops with a bunch of ogres. And the cyclops has got like a collection of rocks near it. And it's right where the river begins to split, right in a spot where it could like pick up rocks and hurl them onto passing boats if need be. Um, and a, a collection of ogres with it. Question. Yeah. How many ogres are we talking about? One, two, three, four. Visible I'm ones. I'm throwing it out there. I'm suggesting that maybe we want to take this fight. There could be something in the cave. I think uh, that's a fight we might be able to win. What could be in this cave that would help us with this mission? We would I mean, kill like, the children of the hunger? Logically, nothing, but, you know, me meta-wise, maybe something. Sturman, don't we have logic. hundreds upon hum hundreds of gold back home? What are you hoping for in this? I think we should focus on the mission rather than becoming greedy for even more treasure. Could be magic items in there. This is a lair of many a beast long gone. Who knows what's hidden away in the nooks and crannies in there? The last time we tried to attack a beast uh, for magic items, we uh, almost died. I say that we skip past them. Ostigan, do you think that we can get past them and not be hurled by rocks? Ugh. Maybe Those you scare them with your mirror with your lightning? Um. How far well, away are they now? Could we cast another fog cloud? You yeah, are maybe a, a half them. mile from them right now. Bostigan like rubs his face and goes, uh, this is very small boat. Big rock, sink boat all at once. Very scary. Maybe we pull up on land, ditch boat, and go by foot the rest of way. Not Could we work. carry the boat across land for a while? I suppose, but, um... We can ditch all of our stuff, Ostigan. Yes, then we have to ditch stuff. Mm. Can't carry all the food and water and the boat. What if we try to pass them at night? I'm sorry, I could not understand. You go, you go ahead. Uh, what if we tried to pass the Cyclops at night? Uh, they oh. must not have very good perception. They have only a single eye. That's true. Cyclops are um, very not very, not very good depth perception. Uh, sound nice. Sound like a nice plan, but I can not see water very well at night. Um, don't want to accidentally run into something and uh, sink boat. Do you have dark vision at all? Anybody? I have dark mm -hmm. vision. What I if, can see uh, through the eyes of the raven at night as well. What if Cypher leads you, tells you how to steer the boat? Huh. 
Mm, Cypher, can you pilot boat or can you just see at night? Because uh, it's hard to make... I mean, like, what? how, how do we... How, how does this work? Oh, hard yeah, to I pilot feel like I probably can't pilot a boat. I don't think it's yeah. something it, Cypher can do. It depends I mean, on how good the moon is, because... I think our plan is to try to pass them while they're asleep, but the moon, depending on its phase and where it is, if the moon is like in is line with the half river. half moon right now. Yeah, so like if it's giving just enough light to see the surface of the water, you might be able to like thread the needle very carefully. Um, hmm. oh. My assumption is that these guys will sleep at night. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, I think I also have dark vision, I'm pretty sure. Let me double check that. Yes, I can see at night. Yes, at night you get a much stronger breeze in the Badlands, which makes it um it makes which makes the sail on your boat catch a lot more wind. Um and so actually at night you go faster on the boat, which is a, a little bit of a problem when you can't see. Um, Could we, do we have like a couple of uh, navigation poles that you would have on this kind of a boat that you would like use to like adjust course, like when you're, you know, whatever. You Could do, there like are some poles to like push sail. off from land, but here the depth is too deep. The, the great river in this area is, no one knows how deep it is. It's well below vision. Your poles, you could put your hand in the water and still not touch ground. But um, you could use them to if, like maybe pull yourself off the off from bumping into a side. Yeah, let's say like he's piloting at night, right? We have two people who can see. Mm -hmm. They can kind of guide him a little bit like, hey, you're going too far this way. And if he does go too far that way, they both have night vision. Maybe they can like bump the boat back on course. We just need to get past this spot. As yeah, well. it's just that he needs to know mm -hmm. like how far away something is, so he knows when to trim the sail and how mm -hmm. far. It's um the knowledge of like it's well, the the meta knowledge. He would need someone yeah. who's good at piloting a boat to help guide him, to, so that Can, they would know what to tell him. We also just go really slow. Um, it makes the winds faster, right? Well, if, wind if, you, is if you trim the if you trim the sail right yep. to make it smaller, it'll catch less yeah. wind. Yeah. What yeah, if we just so, trim the sail and we row? Uh, you were rowing against the current because you're heading upriver. So there's a bunch of you. Maybe maybe it'll work. Okay. I think we should go. Just, I think we should go now. Also, go Ost Ostian, how far is the walk to get out of here? Um, if we go by foot. Yeah. It is. Hold on. Let me get the map. The thing is, as well, while you get the map out, we have all of our supplies on this boat. We can't just mm -hmm. bring. I'd start showing the chest. I, I of, think we might be able to carry. A uh, hundred miles. Um. Fuck. And what well, about the other? Wait. Sorry. Sorry. And there's a swamp ahead, beyond that, right? Do we need the boat yes. for the swamp? Oh, uh, we can walk around the swamp. We can just completely avoid swamp, which is where Ethan will pipe up and be like, "Hey, hey, we're going to Blop. I, you're you're taking me to Blop. We need the boat. We need to go up the river. Otherwise, I'm shit out of luck." Well. Okay. We have Plax's body too, so we go tonight. Uh, another plan, Iron Grip will say, um, "We could wait until the ogres go asleep, uh, and create a tiny hut dome near their camp." and use physical ranged weapons to drive them off where they will not be able to respond. Um, they will either hide into their cave, realizing that they can't stop us, at which point we can send a signal to, uh, oh my God, what is the navigator's name? Ostigan. Uh, Ostigan. Ostigan to bring the boat up river and hold it up river for us. And then we just have to get mm -hmm. around the ogre cave to them. Out of game, I never want to uh, weaponized tiny hut like that because okay, it's sure. used against us, yeah. I also, okay. now that I'm thinking about it, what if these ogres and the cyclops are just guarding the real monster during the night, day while it sleeps? Mm. And at night, really like the real monster comes out. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think that we should. Is... I think we should go at night. We can't go on foot. We can't bring Plax's body and all this other stuff with us. What we if we, uh, what if we make a light stand? And we cover it up and only unleash it like mm -hmm. under the water. 
So it might be enough to like illuminate the rocks and stuff so that the navigator can see, but it won't create like loads of light around us that might draw attention to us. Do you have a, can you make light? I haven't got light, but I think. A cantrip? Roy has light, fuck. Roy is Roy's dead. dead. <laughs> Wait, do you, have, we could do you have light, Iron Grip? Uh, Iron Grip will like go through his list of cantrips and he has message. Poison spray, minor illusion, and shocking grasp. Ugh. Shame. You don't need light in the arena. Nope. <clears throat> also, again, I think, um, well, let's hold a vote. All in favor of going at night, paddling, um, going up river, getting past this when they're asleep. I put my hand up. Mitz will raise his hand. Ethan raises his hand. Uh, Matt Cypher raises will raise her hand. her hand. Okay. How far are the ogres and the cyclops from the edge of the water? The... Um, well, they're sort of milling about a little bit, but the... Cyclops seems to be maybe the, that's the one that has the, the big rock it's maybe about 60, 70 80 feet from the water um, and the ogres are sort of some of them are chatting, some of them are walking up to the water some of them are, are you know alright okay so they're, they're right there Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Iron Grip will say we shouldn't go tonight we should observe them for one night before we proceed I think we should I think that's a good idea Okay. If we see them all fuck off, I think we should go tonight, though. You guys wouldn't last one round in the arena. And yet Cypher I was able to best Cassian. Her. I'm just saying, if this boat sinks in this river at night, we are fucked. You guys didn't know. I was sinking quickly down there. Mm -hmm. It was Maybe cold. For it this... was jellyfish. <laughs> Maybe for this, you could ritual cast uh, water walking on all of us before we go. Also, we don't all have to be on the boat. Wait, you can walk should... on water? Briefly, yes. By gods, why, why you not just walk across water and get them before we come in range of rock? What if there's a... a dragon in there or something? I... drugs. I suppose you die, but... Um, you know, I suppose that's hey, a good point, yeah. We could kill them. Rather than let them take pot shots at the boat or risk crashing at night. Maybe that is the better option. Yeah, maybe we should think about maybe if there's a way to night. if there's a way to approach and ambush them, there's a way to get past them, agree? Yeah. So I think we never fight them. <laughs> I agree. Okay, so I can do water walk for an hour, so maybe that's okay. I'm worried that casting the ritual will draw attention to us because we'll have to like land the boat and then we're gonna have to land the boat anyways in a tiny hut. Wait, so what's the um, what's the purpose of the water walking in this scenario? In case the so, boat crashes while we're going. Yeah. So right. here's the here's the plan. We'll land the boat. We'll wait a night. We'll see what they did tonight. We'll hang out. The next night, if everything went according to plan and they all go to bed, da, 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 we will cast uh, water walking on everybody through a ritual cast. We'll all have water walking for, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes. And that should be enough time for us all to have water walking, get in the boat, and then go and traverse the river and get past this point. And then past that, we shouldn't need um, the water walking anymore because we're not going to get hurled by a rock. How long does water walking last? <clears throat> One hour. One hour. Okay. okay. You know, Neil, would you say that um, my warding wind that gives disadvantage on ranged attacks wouldn't affect thrown boulder? Wait, uh, can... Why... I, I still don't understand why we're scared of hitting the rock if we go with the boat? They're so scared of the who has a huge boulder who's going to throw it at us, and if he hits us, then the boat explodes. Yeah. And we all go into the jellyfish water Yeah, that paralyze you and eat you. Yeah, 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 okay. And how does the boat then, like, how do we, after we water walk, keep traversing the river? I'm so lost. We're not going to water walk, them, only if the boat gets destroyed. Yes, see, if the boat and sinks and on. we water walk, we still fucked because there's no more food, yeah. there's no more water, there's no more money. And then there's we're walking to be... through the badlands. I think this is yes. not... 
Our, our group will say there'll be food, and we'll glance at Stearmere. <laughs> there, there. This is a contingency plan to make sure that we don't just die if we get shot in the water. I, I'd rather not. I, I think it's worth the ritual. Is it? I think we can survive out here okay. if we have to. Is it yeah, maybe worth? Too. Here's a here's an idea, right? Um, if we fog cloud before we pass by them, the the downside is we don't see where we're going either. We have no right? idea where we're going yet. Yeah. yeah, but couldn't we send Drove Razor's Piranha up ahead to scout out the waters, map it out? We draw a little map of the water, aiding us as we go through the fog cloud could that work the, the fog cloud's only 40 feet in radius so it's it doesn't move with the boat it's a sensor on a point so it's like even if i cast it at third level it would be i think 80 feet which is probably still going to be within range for the cyclops to like throw stuff at us when we get out the other side also if they're even semi-intelligent there's not a lot of fog clouds on this river is there like truly i think our best bet is going at night when they're time, probably yeah. asleep where we're gonna wait to see what they do for a night time and then we shouldn't have to have the water walking stuff but it's a contingency plan in case anything goes crazy wrong yeah we should we should have this discussion after we observe their nighttime yeah. and daytime routines because we'll have more information and be able to make a better decision yeah okay but we'll this is all good and, combo. Uh, set up a tiny hut yep you pull off the boat onto the side set up a tiny hut the raven keeps flying above and is able to look down and and see these creatures. And um, I think the rest of the party's out of sight. You know, the, the Badlands are pretty rough, rugged terrain in some places, so you can be well out of sight of them. You can't see them, they can't see you. Only the Raven, which you get to look through, is your, your source of sight. But after a couple of hours, maybe just an, even an hour and change of that Raven flying around, looking at these things, the ogres and cyclops seem to take note of the raven. Um, and you can see them like gesturing up to the raven and questioning. And the cyclops will even um, attempt to hurl a rock, which is well out of range of the raven, but gives it a shot um, anyway. I'll have the raven swoop down and then dismiss it as it like gets hit by the rock. Oh. You try to intentionally get hit, or you know, close enough make to it, make it look like he actually hit it, like he got rid of it. Give me a DC twelve intelligence check. It's great. Um, it's gonna be a Girl great Razor call. is known for his intelligence. Fuck. <laughs> um. Well, the. The Cyclops has really bad eyesight. And so you see the rock flying and the Raven comes diving towards the rock. And then the rock is just like really short. And I think maybe with this natural one, you meant to not dismiss the Raven because like it wasn't going to get to the rock in time. But the thought of like, well, I'm going to then dismiss the Raven in your hand. Like, you know how sometimes you click on something that you don't really mean to just because you're used to like clicking on shit. Your brain was like, dismiss. Fuck, I didn't mean to dismiss it. And you have just a, a fluke of a mistake where it gets dismissed when it's not hit by the rock at all. Um, not a huge problem. You share this interaction with us. Oh, yeah, the, I tell you. The, the, watching the Raven. Yep. It's a bit weird, isn't it? Do you think they know what a wizard is? Mm, I think they... What if... Uh, uh, you remember when uh, Cornelius said that he saw a basilisk around here about a week ago? This guy's war a month ago. I mean, it's one thing to walk through the Badlands on your own once. It's another to be doing it every month. What if that's his lair? And they're his guards? I would believe it. I think that's a bit far-fetched. He would have probably just fucked off immediately when we saw him, no? He smelled like danger. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but... Ogres knowing about wizard familiars? No. I think... It was just strange for a raven to fly in the sky for a long time. Um, unusual animal behavior. I hope so. Well, uh, how do you proceed? Do you resummon the raven? Do you re put a person in a, a scouting position? I will, yeah. 
I, I will suggest as a party that we have whoever's really good at sneaking try to like also get visual. But I will resummon the raven, but I'll have it like hop along the ground as a scout mm-hmm. instead of flying. Yeah, you're going to have to probably get closer then. If it's flying, you've got like height and you can see over all the nasty terrain. If it's going to be hopping, you yourself will have to get close enough that it can hop to a uh, a spot that can see. I can't leave the tiny hut, so I will simply have the raven gently hop as far as it can get. Okay. The raven will hop out 100 feet from the hut, um, but they terrain is still broken enough that you can see like a section of the little um the the far side of where the rivers join but you can't really see enough that you could understand what all the creatures are doing like if an ogre or the cyclops wanders into that zone you'll see them for a bit but then if they wander back out you'll lose sight of them yeah like every i would say like maybe maybe like i'll randomly like once an hour, maybe two, three mm-hmm. times an hour, I'll have the raven like fly up pretty low to the ground so that it doesn't like, it's not a big obvious contrast mm-hmm. against the sky. Or mm-hmm. I'll try to find a perch that I can stand on. Maybe there's like a spike somewhere and it can like stand at the top of the spike and just get a better vantage point. Okay. Once an hour, it'll just yeah. glance up into the air to see if they've gone to sleep. Like they've got to sleep sometime, right? So they That's true. might be crepuscular. They might sleep at dawn instead mm-hmm. of at nighttime. Well, as the sun begins to set, the Cyclops and two of the other ogres head back into the lair. Actually, all the Cyclops and all the ogres head back into the lair. And then a few minutes after that, four different ogres, maybe, probably? Maybe they're the same ogres. Who knows? Uh, head out and head back to that like confluence of where the rivers are. Um, and the Cyclops itself remains within the the cave. Okay. What if we uh, cast Fog Cloud on the cave's mouth so they can't see us? They'll know know something soap, won't they? The only issue is that they are going to throw rocks at us, right? Cyclops is asleep now anyway. Yes. Yeah, but there's four more ogres, no? They can't throw oh, they rocks, they're too well. small. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. The, the best true? time to go is is not at night time. It's at dusk when Ostigan can still see and the uh, Cyclops has gone to sleep and we scream down the river as fast as possible. He might yeah. get one or two rock throws. I agree. And we can deal with that. Okay. I think fog clouding the entrance of the cave is not a bad idea. Can you can you cast it at that kind of range? Um, 120 feet range. I mean, how no. far is the entrance to the cave? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the entrance of the cave is over 200 feet from the shoreline. I mean, he's got to be throwing, like, like how big are these boulders? Like, I know I'm not close enough, but these are got to be huge, right? They do 4d10 plus 6 damage on a hit. Okay, so there's no way he can throw it. That's like throwing a car. He can't throw them that far, right? So if if we can, if he's coming, if you could just fog cloud him, when he goes to throw, we're 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 through if we're going high speed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unless he's able to throw those things like they're longbows and be able to throw them like three hundred feet, then we're done. So. I reckon he can probably throw him pretty far. He looked kind of big, but yeah. Fine, we're gonna go it's at fun. night anyways. Night, okay. dusk. What's the plan? Dusk, dusk. Wait. Uh, dawn? How far dusk, can right? how far dusk. can I throw a rock of equivalent size? Okay, wait. I'm trying to map it out of my head. How far can I throw a rock? Like, whatever. That would do 4d10? No, no, no. You... Like, like a little rock. Oh, a little rock? You could throw like, like... a normal rock, I think, has a range of 30 feet, and then you've got disadvantage, and the rest of the range goes up to maybe. It's probably the same as dagger, I would imagine. I think it's like 100, isn't it? So maybe for the for the Cyclops, this is. He's basically throwing a him sized rock at us, right? Yeah. So yeah it's got to like, be similar range. Range, yeah. yes. It's fine. Let's see. A dagger has range of 2060. So. Yeah. Unless he's like, you know, shot put, shot put god of the Cyclops Olympics. I think as long as we scream down the river and he only gets like one or two attacks off and we fog cloud him, we're good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we wait so for what, dawn? We, or. We, we, yeah. Dusk, we, I think. Was it, it is dusk. dusk presently. Like that's yeah. That's so I think we just down. go. Like, can we just can we just go now? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, like rather He's than wait, let's just go now. Yeah. We go. How long has it been the, since the Cyclops goes in the cave that you want to go? Like immediately, like you see the Cyclops go in the cave, you have this conversation, it's been five minutes. And how, you, much, how much daylight is the left after that he leaves? Uh, I would the argue, sun is already going down behind the mountains. Yeah, so I how group would argue that the safest thing would be to wait until next dusk. Why? I, Cypher will agree. Um, first of all, because like the time when it's just kind of closing right now, it seems like. Second of all, we can have um, water walking casts on everyone as a contingency if we do it tomorrow. Agree? It's true. We do risk another attack here, and we're not that far away from them. I mean, what if they walk over that hill? Tomorrow well, they'll find us. As long Let's... as we're in the tiny hut, I feel like we're at a pretty big advantage. Let's make a decision now, then, because time is of uh, the essence. Uh, if you All want right. to leave tonight, put your hands up. Put my hand up. His up. Wait. It's it's a matter of is going now the best plan? Yeah. That's that's what we're voting on. Yeah. What do you think, Cipher? Do you think we should? Do you think it Cypher would be... keeps her hand down. What does Mitz, Ethan, and the others do? Uh, Mitz yeah. shakes his head. Uh, th th this is way beyond my pay grade. If you want to take on giants and ogres, uh, <laughs> I'm really small. Um, We're not he wasn't listening. <laughs> it's, yeah. Iron Grip will say it's risky, but if we wait, we take more risk waiting until tomorrow night. We can't guarantee that they won't spot us or the boat. We take a chance agree. now. I agree. Three up? Three up. Then we go. Um, Unless Ethan or Ostigan or the cleric has an opinion. The cleric has an opinion. Oh, She's yeah. got Sanctuary. She can cast it on a creature. Lasts one minute. If that creature is the subject of a spell... Oh no, they must choose a new target. Never mind. I take it back. She has no opinion. She has no plot. Let's go. The Cyclops, it's got poor depth perception, right? I start getting the boat back in the water. Okay. Back in the water we go. Um, this evening, right now. Full speed, right now, yep. Full speed. We're trying to go as quickly as possible because uh, light is running out. Light as quickly and as silently as possible down the river. Yeah. And I would also asked Oscadin to stick to the side of the river that's away from the giants. Agreed. I, I will do best, but um, river currents being what they are, it's uh, wise to stick to middle. We, we, do, we do not want to run aground. Stick, stick to the middle, stick, stick to, the middle, to the middle, don't then. crush. Okay. The Eventually, not too long after that, you will come around the river in a spot where you can see, you're going to have to zoom out, um, this setup. Can see the ogres actually the what's his face is gone though Hello, you're not here um there's some ogres and they'll see the boat coming even in the dim light uh, you'll when by the time you can see them they can see you and you'll also notice there's like a red glow coming from a little bit inward um some sort of lava pit or something like that <clears throat> and the ogres will call they will yell, and two of them will run back. Well, actually, just one of them will run back towards the cave, which is just just off to the side of the map, just beyond. Oh, um, shout and cry. I'm going to take bow shots during this time as we're going. I don't think there's a reason not to. Uh, can I also create minor yeah. illusions? Or what kind of minor illusion can I create? Um, you can take bow shots. You can do anything that fits the spell. I don't know what you're looking for. Could I create, oh. like, smaller boats also floating in the river with us? Five-foot cube. Nothing bigger than a five-foot cube. Oh. How many bow shots do you want, Neil, as we go through for this round, too? Um, what is the range of your bow, the max range? Uh, fuck. What do I tell again? And what... 80, 320. Okay, are you, are, are you, you're just attacking whichever ogre, sure. right? Yeah, well, yeah. Just... Um, so then give me... One, da, 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 um, let's take them one at a time. So give me the, yep. your first pair against the first ogre. Um, yes. These will be at disadvantage oh, because okay. they're so at beyond 80 feet. Those are both misses though, right? Um, or do you want another? Well, that's one. That's one attack at disadvantage. Okay. So that's a miss. The second 20. one is a hit. For four. 
war. There you go. Um, the ogres have a move speed of excellence. So this one will take, give me two more shots. Disadvantage. Second, uh, one, two, 20. Second one will hit. Four, three. Right, and that is when all the ogres will take cover. They'll get an object uh, and you know press Can themselves the up against it. Yeah, the party will be closer to here. You're trying to fucking get out of here, Neil. All what right. Are you, what do you What do you, what do you, what well, do you guys gonna, think about costing coal lightning? Oh, okay, we're, we're at our break point, so we're gonna take a break here. Once the ogres have moved into cover, the other ogre has moved towards the cave. The light is failing. And we'll see you, know you on the other side. what I want to do during this break real quick? I want to go hmm. to patreon.com slash save or die and subscribe with at least the goblin tier. So after this episode, I can go and watch the after show. And yeah, you can watch all of the other uh, after shows as you're, well. You're, you're part of the cast. Why would you have to subscribe to the pay? You're going to be on the show. I that have to subscribe. I, Nick, subscribe. And Koibu, subscribe. I'm, uh, I'm subscribed. Yeah. <laughs> the best subscribe? we, have to, we have to subscribe as well. Um, I don't. It doesn't make any sense. I get taxed on money that I'm paying to myself, but the best part of the after show will be Neil describing his joy at sinking this boat and everyone in it. <laughs> oh, I've been waiting for days. All right. Get you on the side of a break. Nick, I got 12K margin. What do I put it on right now? Uh, block. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck I mean, okay, it, if you want to gamble, right? <laughs> I'm ready. Put on, yeah, put on a horse or something. Go. Like, the return you get on a horse is insane. 600% in one day. I'm, I'm not, I'm not buying on margin, dude. It's not There's happening. Not how much money I made off of DRX during League of Legends Worlds. Holy shit. Goddamn. All right, let's play some D&D, though. Yes, let's yes. go. I know finance. Are you muted, Neil? Oh my god. Yeah. I, I, I counted like, us in. We are live. Oh. I counted <laughs> us in. I said, hey everybody, welcome stuff. back to the Lazarus Expedition. And then uh, you immediately jumped in with the, the well-timed, I've got 12k margin joke. And I thought that was for the audience. That's terrible. We're in game. Okay. Please roll me initiative. I was muted. <laughs> okay, Neil, I think our boat should be moving faster. Than um, you are rowing, actually, First off, six second win. rounds, right? So we're actually not moving very far in six seconds. Um, if we have the sail up, then everyone in the back of the boat can't see anything because the sail will be blocking um, everything in this zone from being able to see pretty much anything. That's fine. Um, Sails up, we're going as quickly as we can. Yep. And it's dusk where the wind goes fast, right? right? Yes, it is. the wind is increasing in speed, absolutely. That onshore I'm gonna breeze. I'm gonna draw a little. Can, can I see an ogre to send a message? Um, here's an ogre. Uh, I, I'm using the message country. Yeah, yeah. You can see an ogre to see them send a message. You can like catch their foot or something underneath the sail, or poke your head forward for just a moment. Uh, I will say, um, brother of the maw, let us pass in peace. What's the range on message? Is it ninety feet? 120 feet. Awesome. Perfect. The ogre uh, will respond, Brother of the Maw, come have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> they really follow these. this new religion. I like it. Uh, oops. Oops. No. No. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Uh, and did we have... The quick claw. Yes, you rolled initiative. Perfect. Alrighty. So, Cypher Quilt Claw, you've got your bow out. Go ahead and take me a pair of shots. Um, the ogres are now behind half cover, so they have, I think it's plus two to AC. Wait, I'm, I missed this. The ogres are not going to be uh, passive after that message, right? They're still looking to fucking kill us. Am I oh, I've already been right? shooting them. I've already Who been knows? shooting them. Well, if you've already been shooting them, we might as well fucking... Twelve Wait. Razor will call out and earnestly say they invited us to dinner. <laughs> we'll be um, the dinner. <laughs> Cy Cypher knows that this means nothing good when Twelve Razor says it. 
and she will take a shot with the longbow. Uh, here. All right. They have plus two AC from being behind cover. Uh, you take a shot. The fuck out of that one. Wild miss. And second shot. Nineteen. Yeah, you catch that. Catch a Tella. Should these be at disadvantage or no? No, he's within 150 feet of his longbow range. Perfect. The longbow um, just seems better than the shortbow. Fuck. It is better for most things. Um, the only disadvantage is that you can't use a longbow from horseback and a couple other cases. Like if there's a you know tall parapets or something, longbow is just, it's a big object, harder to use in, in tight spaces. But Cassian so I'm no longer is in your disadvantage turn. against this guy. Wrecked. Uh, and I can't, I can't use great weapon fighting with this, obviously. Nope. It's not a great weapon. Okay, here you go. Six Whoosh. and nine. Hit. Uh, ooh, nine would cover. be a hit, but they have two AC from cover, so it is a miss. Right, and our boat will move. I don't know which way he's going. Move like that. And from the other side, the ogre disappears inside and has a conversation and next round cassia i'm sorry quick claw no not even that seer mirror still this round as the boat moves where is the cyclops's pile of rocks uh you will see that there is not a singular pile of rocks i am so sorry a, oh, a good cyclops okay. has multiple stashes of rocks scattered around yes that no, makes makes perfect sense so I, he's yeah. not in range to be fog clouded yet for that for that plan guys so I'm within 60 feet of this ogre, Neil, would you say? Y'all? Yeah. Uh, I just cast Sacred Flame at him. Sacred Flame? Uh, which I will now click the button to do. Doing 8 Radiant Damage, unless he can make a DC 15 deck save. Don't you know, ogres are great at deck saves, but not this one. Not this uh... one. Eight radiant damage as the sacred radiance burns across his flesh. I want to throw a rock back. Do you have a rock in the boat? Also, you're it's... behind the sail. You can't. You can't effectively yeah, throw uh, rocks. You're okay, fucked. I skipped my turn. I'm sorry. Cipher Quick Claw. Go ahead and give me two bow shots. A boom. Sixteen. Uh, That's a hit. But you didn't move the boat as well. Sorry. I, I moved it. Before he took his, before Steamer took his turn, but I did get the damage. Did the, the cleric not? Oh shit! The cleric not want to bless us. Uh, like maybe well, cast, you cast all cast said that you were just going to go by okay. quickly without <clears throat> yeah. doing 20. anything. Yeah, it's okay. funny. Savage attacks unfortunately only procs on melee weapons, but I will give you a regular old crit. Thank you. Um, I just roll damage twice, right? Uh, no, you just took the bow. Took it. it'll, it'll know. Yes, it's okay. very smart. Did it do it? It Didn't did do it. not do it. But roll me I another D8. D8. Yeah, so eight. that's a two and six is eight damage to the Ogre. This guy's right. dying. Yes, My this guy is dying. He's, he's um, dying to go to my um, Cassie. 12. 20 and 12, both are hits. Five. Five damage is crap. And that is when our dear friend, the Cyclops, shows up and will dish, 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 hurries on over. Um, this next ogre uh, is just going to chill. Steer mirror. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to have to cast the Fog Cloud now. I'm going to, against my better judgment, cast it at level three. So that's my last level three spell slot. Um, so it's going to be a 60 foot radius fog cloud. Can you make it for me, Neil? And I'll I'll move it where I want to put it. I'll do you. Yeah. It's within 120 feet. feet. It's in within 120. Okay, yeah, but I'm not there, am I? No, but that's the size, the size of the cloud. You oh, fool. Right. Yeah. You fool. <laughs> ah, I, where'd it go? You know what? I'll let you play your character. I won't. Disagree with what you're doing. Thank you. Darn it. I thought I'm I thought I was following the plan. I did have a thought to just cast Call Lightning last round and just start pinging these ogres behind their rocks, but a bit more. It's a bit bigger yeah. than that now. I know. I, I, a spell is an action. Was the thing I was going to say. 
Yes, it takes your action to ready it, and it takes your reaction to cast it, and it can only be readied for one round. Gotcha. That looks, that looks good. That's good. A little yeah, bit bigger. There we go. go. Perfect. Guys. And can be controlled by Steermere. All right, so where wait, are you going to place this? Can you move this? the fog cloud around? No. Okay. You can just place it once. Neil, let me, you know, do, am I feeling like once we're off the map, we're safe or not? No, probably not. Okay. What do you guys think about here? I want you to place it where you think that it's good. It's a hundred, it's going to be 120 feet away. So this is about as far away as I can get it. I can maybe go a little mm -hmm. bit further to the right. Um, but I think that's probably good. Yeah. Okay. You're here, so you could technically put it, yeah, over here, there. Alrighty. Uh, but it's the Cyclops by a pile of rocks right now. Nope. Well, maybe. I don't know. You are okay. on lower ground. And fine, fine, yeah, fine. and it's dusk. The boat okay. moves. I leave, it. I, I leave it there. Iron grip. You're still behind the sail. Yep. Shouldn't the boat turn? Yes, but it's a huge pain in the ass and it'll make all the tokens all fucky. Okay. But uh, yes, it'll be like this, yet the, the sail is still, like, the wind comes this way, and so the sail is still doing, like, um... That. I'm just taking the dodge action, ready to... Excellent. You know what they say, safety first. Or third. Um, next up is... Ogre. This ogre, who is, um... Oh, it's on the map layer. Uh, this guy is done. He's going to move 40 feet into the fog cloud and vanish. Um, Cypher Quick Claw. Um, you can I'm no guessing... longer see anything. Yeah, I just uh, ready a dodge or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this guy will... Uh, on over I draw here. my bow. I pick up my great axe and I'm ready to attack to attack the rock that's coming. And fuck you if you say I can't. Because <laughs> I'm going to roll a 20. Uh, Cassian's turn. You put away your bow. You pull out the axe. You see him there. He's holding the axe and he's ready. He's looking. Mm hmm. The Cyclops will take a turn and will come down 60 feet over here. Uh, this ogre inside the fog cloud will move and dash to get out of the fog cloud. Steermere will take a turn. Can you do another? Oh, no, yeah. it's concentration. Oh, true. Yeah, I was thinking that. Um, I don't think there is anything else I can do right now. The boat moves 30 feet ish. Sail no, the sail. Come on, sail. R.I.P. Sail starts. Right, Iron <laughs> grip. The jailer. Uh, I will cast a. Do I think a sleep spell would do anything here? I don't think I'd have a roll super high. Um, incredible. Yeah, I'd have to roll insanely good. Let me just quickly look through my list of spells if there's anything I can do right now. Nope, because I took zero ranged spells. Zero cantrip ranged spells. So nice. I will look through the eyes of my raven and report on the movements of this ogre. I'm trying to get an idea of do I think it's dashing to get to us? Or is it just like nor normally walking? Um, well, it's moving like 60 feet in a round. So that's a pretty good click. Okay, I feel like it's dashing and it's not that fast. Got it. I'm. I'm into that one. Cipher. All of a sudden, uh, some ogres have come into view at full HP. I don't know if you're interested in shooting them or not. Might as well. Let's fucking do it. Yeah. Let's take some shots. Why not? Twenty. Excellent shot. Six damage. Beautiful. Eleven, 11 is a miss. hit. Oh, really? Okay. Fuck These guys him. have Boom. crap AC. Six yep. more damage. All right. Uh, this ogre is going to move and dash over here. This ogre is going to move over here. 
Cassian has his axe ready. Yes, sir. Right. The Cyclops will finally get to a spot where he can grab a rock. And honestly, the only part of the bow he can really see is the front right near Cassian. So he grabs a rock, hefts it in the air, and hurls it in your direction. Would you make me an attack roll against the rock as it flies towards the bow? It's a hit. Is he in range though now? How far can he throw this rock? Well... Oh, yeah, you're definitely in range. Um, I don't know how to deal with the... Oh, it was going to be a critical hit with the rock. Holy shit. I need to look up rock AC and HP. I'm a genius, Nick. Is that... Should he be rolling without <laughs> disadvantage here? No, I mean, listen, I'm sorry. I looked Oh, you're right. Stuff. He should be rolling at disadvantage. Yeah. It is more than 30 <laughs> listen, feet away. I'm just, I'm just taking oh, okay, issue with yeah, that yeah. crit. Okay. Yes. Okay, it's <laughs> a 13. A it bit. would still hit the boat. It would absolutely still hit the boat. But I've hit the rock. Because <clears throat> I'm a genius. Yes. I'm just looking up object HP and AC. Uh, la, 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 la. La, 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 la. Oh, this is, um, it has 4d8 HP. Oh, that thing's living. Um, here, back. Mm -hmm. And its AC was 17, so you did hit it. Yeah, but he doesn't have to destroy it, he just has to deflect it. Oh, it rolls low on HP, it is a fragile rock. Nine. All right, you slash into it, it does not break the rock. Should I roll a um, a check for my axe, or is my axe gonna be okay? Um, let me resolve the rock issue first, and then I'll resolve the axe. If you you don't break it, do you do enough damage to reflect it? Nine out of thirteen is more than half, but not quite three quarters. I think you might do like a little bit of a deflection, but I think it's still gonna hit front of the boat not you personally but it's still going to collide with the boat in the front no my way. question is how much ac does the boat have does this like count as a parry and give the boat like plus two ac perhaps but i think the boat is a pretty easy to hit target it's fairly large and it's fairly slow moving and it's made out of wood um But it's got HP and stuff, right? It is... Yeah, it has 5d10 HP. Can this at least fuck up some of the damage? We'll say it mitigates damage. Okay. All right, we'll say the, the 13 damage um, is reducing the damage that the rock would do. That's a good answer. So the rock would do 26, minus 13 is 13. And your boat has, we said, 5d10. Would you roll that, Mr. Mooten? 5d10 for the boat HP. Roll big. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. 39. Nice. Wait, it's a good roll. What just happened there? You rolled 48 damage and got 13, so why is it no, no, not 26? No. You rolled 4... What'd you roll 48 for? Oh, it's yeah, the rock's the... HP. That's the oh, rock's HP. And the then rock's he rolls HP the damage. The rock's oh, oh, okay. okay. And you did 9 to the rock, yeah, not yeah. 13 to the rock. Okay, so yeah. it takes... Your boat takes um, 17 damage. 17. Yeah, okay. So it has 39... And it took 17. There we go. Oh, but it's fucked. That's okay. 39. Visible to everyone. Andrew. Oh, I thought I it doesn't matter. Time, Nick. It doesn't matter. You got one next time. This next rock, I got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, this ogre over here is going to, now that you're all within range and he's got some allies, will pull out one of his javelins and hurl it at Cassian. Whoosh! Hit. Um, 19 will hit you for 12, and Steermere will take a turn. Okay, I'm going to use a level 2 spell slot to cast Fog Cloud. Sorry, Neil, you're going to have to make an 80-foot uh, circle this time. 
my god. So you, want, you don't want to shrink this one because this one's going. Oh right, you're you're actually removing because it's yeah. um. Concentrate, so I can't have both. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Um. And you can do whatever you want with it. Well, oh, I, I want to put it. I want to. You know, the map's going to extend, and the boat's about to move. So, mm -hmm. I would like to. I would like to know where the boat's going to be. Uh, this river just sort of continues to take the same direction, like it. Kind of. I just know, but how like far this. am I going to move? The boat moves about thirty feet around. So, this is not a good long-term solution. This boat's going to sink. We might need to go to ground, guys. I so I thought we just had to get past them, and then the river would open up, and they wouldn't be able to get us anymore. I didn't realize. I think so, so eventually, past... but like that's always a matter of time. What what is past, right? We well, just need to. Get I thought it was like they can't, the way, they can't they can't see us now. They're going to think we're still going. Why don't we pull try and pull onto this beach here and fight them? So this is this is a moment of where I should have really question uh because now i was thinking that i thought like we're past them the river widens up and we just sit to the other side of the river they can't get us but now I i'm agree. thinking i thought we'd have like were... three rounds but now i'm thinking you meant the river would split and now they're just gonna walk down the river and keep throwing stuff at us which is it's... hmm where are you um, putting your phone cloud now? yeah i mean more or less the nail i mean maybe a little bit perfect like like this yeah does our cleric have the um, mending spell? Let's see. Followers. Mott the healer. Uh, she has. Oh, she has light, huh? Uh, wow. And resilience Fucking and amazing. spare the dying. Resistance and spare the dying. I I suggest that we now beach and try and fight these. Nothing else has come out. I think this is it. I think we can. I think we've got more chance of fighting them because if we're going to take another two or three rock throws, I agree. We can kind of just beach here now. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they can't see us, right? They're going to think we're yeah. still going. We'll beach and we'll get the jump on them. All right. Well, so you don't call. Forget we actually messed up one of them. It's true. You yeah. call yeah. for Ostigan to to beach the boat. Right here. All right, and it is the boat's turn to go, and he will uh, make a hard turn and go 30 feet Stay right to the edge. saving Private Ryan. Uh, Iron Grip the Jailer. You got what you wanted all along, Nick. <laughs> yes, let's kill the fucking Cyclops. Uh, so um, Iron Grip, the boat is just pulling up onto the shore, right? Like it's technically it'll be stable next round. The tip of it is maybe hitting the beach right now. If you want to like push past your allies and run onto the the ground, you're gonna need to make me a dexterity check DC 15 to push past everybody without like tipping the boat or falling yourself off. Um, and there's also the sail on your way. It, this is not a great beach landing situation. Can I just take a regular move, like, just, like, shuffle my way to the front of the boat? I'm not trying to get off. I'm just trying to get to the front. So could I squeeze through with my allies, or would that be a bad... That move? would still be the... Out. That would be the dex check, is trying to squeeze past people. What's the consequence would, of failure? Falling in the yeah. water. No, I'm um, going to ready a... Ready a move. Uh, I'm going to ready a move action. Okay. So, you, yeah, that's a great idea. Just wait for that's everyone fine. else to get off the boat and then follow afterwards. Lovely concept. Um, you just skip Cypher. Uh, uh, yeah, no, there was an fine. ogre who was before who was just, you know, in the fog cloud that just disappeared. Um, and so now that that fog cloud disappears, this ogre can look around. He was fucking off, though. Oh, fuck. He I didn't know that fucking was. Fuck. And he, yeah, he was in the fog cloud. He was hidden. Um, he will fail his morale check and oh, fuck off. Cypher. Um, same rule applies to you, but you have less people to go through. It's a DC five uh, dex check, athletics oh, or acrobatics check. You can do that. To uh, get to shore without falling in. It's like a 15% chance to fail. You're muted. Boom. Boom. Beautiful. Cypher you jumps over me. Mm -hmm. Backflips. All the backflips, yes. She smiles and is ready to... She, she draws her swords, smiles, and is ready to fight. She's excited. Right. Well, here you are on the shore. What are you going to do? 
Um, I think, okay, so I'm trying to think of this in like Valorant terms, and the fog cloud is kind of like smoke, right? Um, I think the best thing to do would be to move to the edge of the fog cloud for now and like mm -hmm. ready an attack for if something pops out. Mm, all right. So there you go. Um, ooh, that is so far that you can move and dash there, but you wouldn't have a readied action. Oh. You've only got 30 feet of movement. Um, can a ready attack be done? So like, does it make sense? Cause like, I would still have to, if something pops out and I have a readied attack, I still have to do the movement, right? How does that work? Um, they would have to come within range of you to. Yeah, yeah, okay. In yeah. that case, uh, I would ju I just do my normal movement. Um, okay. Well, I guess it. Hold on, let me think. You can also take yeah. the dodge action. It's true. I do my normal movement, and ready an attack. Okay, normal move, ready the attack. I should probably roll in this one and this one and this one into initiative. Okay, so that was Cypher Mott's turn. Since we are closing and it is going to be a combat situation, Mott will expend a spell slot and cast... Um... Yep, yep. We're just going to go with a, a standard bless spell, and we will bless Cypher. They all have to be within range. Ooh, Cypher is actually out of range. So it won't be Cypher, but it'll be all the others who will inevitably be in range. So it's going to be Cassian, it's going to be Steermere, and it's going to be Mitz. They will be blessed. Fuck up some ogres, bruh. Um, Ethan chills, Ogre goes, oops, on the map layer, Ogre will go to about here, Mitz chills, Ogre will stumble out of the fog cloud, uh, and then see people and move forward, triggering one of Cypher's attacks, because you can't, don't get both your attacks with a, a ready to action. All right, uh... 20. Oh, nice. beautiful. Seven damage. Yes. You take a nice chunk out of the ogre's leg as Cassian, who needs not make any check to get off the boat. I'm going to fuck this kid up, Neil. Right. You have plus D4 on your attacks, but you only need a nine to hit. Hold up. Um, I'm also going to Great Weapon Master here. Mm-hmm. So here you go. Here's my Great Weapon Master at normal attack. 17. Easy shot. The two-handed sword comes up. It 22. hits the ogre in the chest, ripping its breast apart. Two-handed axe, but here's axe. my second attack. Yes. Great weapon master. 10. Still a hit. Plus four. Hit. For 23. Right. Now is the time but we resolve the axe hitting the, the stone. The second time you hit this person. I'm going to ask you to make me... You're a fucker. Green, a saving throw. This is a, your ax is made out of iron it is, or metal, and it needs a saving throw versus crushing blow. It needs a seven or higher on a d20. Any bonuses for this being like expertly, expertly crafted, 750 GP fucking ax? Nope, if it, had a if it was a magic weapon, it would get a plus one bonus. We're good. Nice. Cool. Your ax is fine. Totally fine. The Cyclops will pick up a rock. It'll move. Wait, how can he know we're here? Oh, I guess sounds of battle. Sounds of battle. It, but more than that, it doesn't necessarily know you're here. It just wants to see your boat. And so it comes over to like... this way? Our boat um, yeah, I think it was this the, way. the idea it was yeah, that yeah. it wouldn't know we'd turned. I mean, that was the thing. We were it going is this way. Now. They and easily he... tricked. That's true. Let's see if it can discern the sounds of battle as sign that the people have been on land. Or maybe one of its ogre companions said, they've made landfall, an ogre. Maybe 
the enemy has communication. Maybe. Yeah. Natural Maybe. 20 on the intelligence Ooh. check. <laughs> That's fine. That is good Jesus. enough. It picks up a rock. It comes on over here. Um, and it will throw the rock, not at the boat, which is clearly already here, but just at Steermere. Disadvantage. I, yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's at more than 30 foot range, yes. Uh, two throws, 11. Miss. Miss. Steermere. It's Good. time. I'm glad it's on this. Get him, it's Nick. Time. I move forward 30 feet off the boat to... And that will trigger... Uh, Iron Grip's turn to get off the boat as yes. well. The movement. And then... See, is there anywhere I can get? The shatter's 60 feet, and it's got a 10-foot radius. Is there... Are you willing to give me a 5-foot leeway here, Neil? I'm not increasing the range of shatter? No? Um, Wait, it's got a 10-foot you... radius, did you say? Yeah. Which That means it's 20 feet across, right? Yeah. yeah, but that yeah. means if you oh, hit yeah. here, it hits there. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah, so I can get both. I can get from this spot here, I can get both the ogre on the Cyclops. Yes. Yep. All right, that's what I do. I cast Shatter at level two. Get him, Nick. Or, but I'm using my, uh, I'm using my Wrath of the, No, my Channel Divinity to make it do 24 Next damage. damage. Um, yeah. Right, they both get saves, con saves. Here comes the Cyclops' con save. It's a natural nice. one. And nice. the ogre's con save is also a failure. So they each take Ooh. 24 damage as a thunderous sound splits the air. <laughs> Kaboom. Um, this you... ogre, who has thrown his javelin, will come out of the fog, knowing what to see, but does end up seeing these things. Takes the club in hand, comes next to Cypher, brings the club up, and drops it down upon Cypher's head. Whap! 18 to hit for uh, 12 wow. bludgeoning damage. Thud. Yeah, we're fine. French. Um, the boat is fully ashore now. Uh, and that will I trigger. My is not updating, or I don't know if it's just bugs. Oh, it's updating it's for me. Bugs. but Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. it's just. Cool, cool. If you refresh, it'll fix it, but then you'll lose the music. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Mitz's ready to action goes off to get on shore. Ethan's ready to action goes to get him close to offshore, but not all the way. Um, everyone else is chill. Iron Grip the Jailer. So, can I get to this tile right here? DC 5 athletics check. Would that use my action? No. But if you fail, oh, you fall on your face. Listen, I got... Pl Listen, I am... Hobgoblin extraordinaire. I got plus four athletics. Okay. DC so five. Don't roll a one. Five. Just don't roll a one. Easy. Oh yeah, easy peasy. Um. Okay. So I He's make it to that tile. It's blessed as well. Uh, if that counts. I'm yeah, within, but one's a one. Would you? Would you say I'm thirty feet away from this guy? Uh, yes. I can't. Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And would you say I'm thirty feet from this guy? Yes. I cast blind at level three. <laughs> Would you put it in chat for me? Why do One I feel second. like the shenanigans are about to happen here? I'm just, I just, it's only a range of 30 feet, so I wanted to make sure I was in range. You can blind and deafen. When you cast at third level, you choose an additional creature. All right, so you're nice. blinding the Cyclops and the Ogre. Correct. The full and... health Cyclops and the full right. health Ogre. Um, why is the Cyclops at less than full HP? No one has. Oh, you you, you shattered it. You shattered it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, cool? What's the DC on this? Fourteen. Let's go. Con. Unfortunately, so they, unfortunately, yeah, they have a good yeah. chance to resist. Oh, nice. yes. Big times. Let's go. Oh, they are both <laughs> immediately blinded. I mean, let's be honest. Cyclopses should have disadvantages on checks to be against blindness. Because they only got one eye, right? I mean, it's just, one it's, eye, it's yeah. fucking it's magic, though. Like, it's magic is magic. What is the number yeah, but of eyes? You, because, you know, uh, I failed, say, partially. I only got blind in one eye, right? <laughs> That's not how the saving throw works. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the good news is um, they can't see. Uh, they automatically fail all sight ability checks, and attacks against them have advantage. Fuck yeah, these guys are fucked up. We've won this. 
I'm just unlucky about the dragon. That's what's come out. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's the end of my turn. I think. Yep. Excellent. Um. Yeah, I guess Mott is going to come up to twenty-five feet. Um. And we'll cast. Where is it hiding here? Did Cypher lose his turn? You might have double clicked, yeah. Oh, the... did I double click? Yeah, I was wondering when I'm going to get to fucking do anything. I think we double clicked accidentally. Okay, before Mott goes, it's Cypher's turn. All right. Is the, the, is the blinded ogre, do I get any bonuses on a. Advantage. Advantage. Um, okay. Let's use my first attack to finish off the low health ogre first. Mm -hmm. Should be easy. So, 13's a hit. A damage. And that is enough to kill. The ogre will drop to the ground. The Ugh. All right. Second hand um, at advantage against the blinded ogre. 17. Is a hit. 12 damage. Excellent. Damn. And uh, third attack. Offhand, yes. 19, excellent. Minimal yeah, damage. Nice turn, dude. Nice turn, um, The question is, do I feel like I want to action surge? I feel like... Do you get action surge back after a short rest? Mm-hmm. Yes. No. I feel like it's worth it here. Um, we're going to get lots of short rests. <clears throat> Do it. Yeah, might as well. This is a really good position. Uh, action surge. Does that? I, I get two more attacks, right? Two. Yes. All right. Let's do it again. Hit. Ooh, eleven. Lots He's of damage. Max damage. At the blinded ogre. This is Getting why they call the you quick that claw. She needs to. That's right. And another one. Critical oh, hit. Oh, crit. Triggering savage attacks, <sighs> which means. I roll this dice not twice, but three times. Oh, sick. Yeah. Um, is it going to do it automatically for me? I think so. Try it. Uh, Why the fuck? Did you click the... All right. Roll me another Our... 2d10. And, why are these yeah. d10s? Our character sheets are a little bit weirder yeah, than the, the other ones. What the fuck's wrong with your character sheet? Dude. 2d10? No, no, no. It, I, don't know. I think it's 2d8. It should be... Just roll me 3d8 plus 3. I don't know why when you crit, it rolled d10 plus 3. Yeah, it's doing d8 for everything else. Yeah. Wait, because he's doing... That's a two-handed longsword attack, not a one-handed longsword attack. That's oh, cool. I'm sorry. My bad. But it didn't do the crit anyway, so... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's weird. Crit. Still roll, roll me... 3d8 plus 3. 3d8 plus 3 for 20 damage. Literally, Ooh. it's remaining HP, and it drops to the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cypher just it, fucked them up. Nice. As it drops, Cypher will hold its chin up as it, like, collapses and whisper Ugh. something and pull her sword out and let it fall. The, yeah. I imagine with with the four hits that you got on this ogre, the first two were, like, to the legs, and so it drops mm -hmm. down on its knees before you, and the third one goes across the belly, and this last one is the the aforementioned sword in the head as the creature falls to the ground. That's right. This is the power of the Jailer and the Quick Claw. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, Mott will come here, and she will cast Resistance, which is a Consecration Cantrip on Stearmir, so that Stearmir has an extra D4. Uh, wait, no, Bless is con Concentration. Never mind. She casts nothing. In fact, she stays on the boat. She has no actions. Okay. Uh, Ethan will move here and take a singular shot with his bow at the um, Cyclops and will hit and do some sneak attack damage. I think it's 3d6 at his level. <laughs> wow, that's nice roll. Fuck. Good job, Ethan. Um, yeah, roll three one d ones. Jesus. Jesus. It's two d six. Also, not three d six. So he does two damage on top of the 
nine, so it's eleven to the, the Cyclops. Do you know when you're um, like playing League and your teammate attempts a really, really stupid dive and fails miserably and all you can do is like laugh at it? That's the kind of laugh that Cypher yeah. is right now. Right. The next ogre will run all the way up, um, but that will be its turn. And where is my... Here. I forgot to ask for my crow token, by the way, when you get a moment. Oh, yes. And here, where are we? Just adjusting, adjusting. Excellent. Um, Mitz's turn and your token. Uh, here is our spirit animal section. Better not get in my way, little boy. I mean, he's a minion. He's going to get in your way. He's going to attack the ogre, isn't he? I'm just surprised he can go up. Will you? Fuck, here we go. This is you your range. bird controlled Perfect. by Potato. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, mitts, 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 mitts. Mitts. We're winning the fight. He's on full health. Dashes okay. to get to the backside of the ogre. Um, leaving, that's a dead ogre. A Cassian's turn. I had enough movement. I go here. Yep, um, and you have and flanking. You have advantage on this attack now. Oh, Two attacks nice. coming through. Great weapon mastery. 19 mitts. and 12. Hit. Uh, first one's a hit because you have advantage. One, so 24 and 20. Oh, Jesus oh do you want me to roll it again? Uh, yeah, yeah. Roll me another two in case you crit, but so, it doesn't really matter with that damage. Do I have the damage dice? Yeah, yeah, yeah you it's go. fine. Yeah, you fucking you slaughter the ogre immediately. It just crumples to the ground as its limbs are hacked off of it. <laughs> and I'm also gonna second wind, which is one d ten plus five. Excellent. Um, the cyclops is blind. It gets another saving throw at the end of its turn, I believe. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Yes, but in the meantime, the cyclops is going to. Uh, I think it just. <laughs> like stumbles into this thing and then bumbles down here and ends its turn doing that and gets its second con save. Mm. Uh, 10, Bell. not good enough. All right. Finally, the other creatures that were in the cave are beginning to emerge. Um, they have gotten to this point and the first one will come on in. Now, there's a bit of a blood show going on over here. There's three dead ogres, a blinded cyclops, and uh, our new ogres don't really know the situation. And all they know is that this is battle. This is what they were born for. And so they are coming on in hot. Steermir. Yeah, okay. I will run over here whilst abandoning the concentration of my fog cloud spell mm -hmm. um and then casting sacred flame at the cyclops the six damage on a tc 15 dex yeah does he have disadvantage on dex saves nope he's blinded he should right it's only on site based attacks isn't it uh, well, Depends how four. you dodge Sacred Flame. It's a deck saving throw, so I would argue he is trying to dodge it. Oh, Doesn't fair. matter. Yeah. yeah. For the future, I would agree with Nick, actually. That's true, because he wouldn't see it coming. Yeah. It's like a yeah. fireball. You don't see it's coming. Yeah. Excellent. <clears throat> um, boat does not need to go anymore. Iron Grip. Uh, yes. Now, uh, let me check my familiar speed. I think it might be 50 feet flying. Uh, it is 50 feet flying. Okay. Uh, so it can get to here. It can mm. dash. I'm going to be dashing. It's still above. Um, but it's just in position should I need it to deliver a shocking grasp. I okay. think that was... Yeah. Um, I am going to move forward 30 feet. I guess I'll move around this giant corpse. I'm going to get to this position. And uh, I will ready a blindness spell 
at level two should any creature any hostile creature enter in the range of 30. Uh, so mine just does not require you, concentration before you do that it takes it burns a spell slot to ready the spell um, and then the spell can has to be cast by the end of your next turn. So if you ready it and no one shows up, you still burn the spell. Yeah, Iron Grip doesn't believe in conservation. Um, awesome. Okay. Uh, next ogre. Cypher Quick Claw. There are two dead ogres at your feet, slain by you, both of them. Um. It looks like it's going to be an easy battle from here on out. Most of the enemy is dead. Right? I mean, the ogre can still uh, get his eyes back and the Cyclops, sorry. The Cyclops is blinded, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Is he gonna. Um, he's not gonna get an attack for opportunity or anything if I move into his range, right? Mm hmm. You can't move far farther. I mean, I could dash, I think. No, I have to go around, right? Mm hmm. You can make a, no. a check to climb up the wall, but failure is the end of your turn. Oh, fuck it, let's try it. All right. Uh, I think in the that Badlands, works. this uh, 10 foot cliff here is maybe a DC 13 athletics check. Climbing also uses double your movement, I believe. Yeah. So 45, 55, 60 will get you here. Nice. Okay. I'm good. Uh, Mott will get off the boat and do nothing. Healer just chills. Next ogre runs in 80. Ethan will move to here and take a shot at um, one of the incoming ogres. With a critical hit for Damn. 10 points of damage. Right. Sneak attack or no? No, he doesn't have advantage on the sneak attack. Um, this is a dead ogre. Mitz will uh, hide behind this column. Cassian. I'm going to move um, 60 feet. All right. This way. Right here. All right. Our Cyclops is still bumbling away, kind of running into things and feeling its way along the wall, uh, getting away from the baddies, and finally passes its saving throw. All right. Here we go. Next up is this ogre who is coming right for you, Iron Grip the Jailer. Uh, give means... me a DC 14 con check, because I am casting blind on him the second he comes into range. Pass. Well, that's fine. All right. Um, the ogre will go all the way here, which will trigger Mitz's ready to attack uh, for a Rocking whopping a four Mitz. points of damage. The ogre has no extra ability to attack, but it faces the hobgoblin. Um, this ogre will come on over here and blank Mitz. Steermere? No. No, Mitz. Um. <laughs> I don't really know what I want to do here. I think I cast Shield of Faith on uh, Cypher. All right. It's a great spell. Giving Cypher plus two AC. Oh, that's a bonus action. Um, and then with my cantrip. I will cast Sacred Flame on this ogre fighting uh, Mitz. This one fighting Mitz. Or seven. You said the top one, right? Yeah, yeah. The Cyclops is retreating, right? Yeah, Maybe it's been... not anymore now that it's got its eyesight back. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, IGJ. Oh, nice. Let's potato oh. make whiskey. Oh, Good. sorry. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> who was he referring to? And I was like, is he talking to me? Um, so I'm going to use my movement to step. I'm staying inside his zone of control, but I'm stepping one, two, three tiles to here so mm -hmm. that he can't squeeze through us. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I'm going to use my uh, action mm -hmm. to do a 
shocking grasp melee attack, uh, which is a cantrip. I don't mm -hmm. know how to... I think he... It's a touch instantaneous spell save 14. Uh, on a fail, I do 2d8 damage. Okay. Lightning springs your hand. Da, 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 da. Make a melee spell attack against the target. Um, oh. So oh. it's going to be... Oh, that will be on my character sheet. Hang on, I'll find it. Yeah, I think it's like a d20 plus six. Skadoosh. Uh, that's a nine. Uh, that's hits, actually. They have AC nine. Oh. Perfect. Then I will roll damage for... Uh, 2d8, because you're fifth level. Uh, seven, damage. seven points. And it cannot take reactions until the start of its next turn. Or your next uh, turn. Perfect. Um, I will stay where I am. Excellent. Our next ogre will full on run all the way up right next to Cassian, but it takes all of his movement, has no other actions available. Cypher. All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, she will um, attack this ogre that is closest to her. Mm hmm. Um, might as well. Makes the most sense. Mm hmm. Um, let's fucking attack it. Boom! Hits. 14 for 10 damage. Ugh, and the hits just keep rolling. And uh, 12 hits for 9. Uh huh. And third attack, a 22. Yup. Hits for 8. Excellent. God damn, Cypher. Tons nice of damage. damage to it. Yeah. Uh. Ma retreats. The next ogre can come to here and still make an attack. Just barely can get here and will great club Cassian. Miss. Whoosh, with a natural one. Uh, Ethan is going to take a bow shot at the ogre next to Iron Grip. Uh, 22 will hit for 5 plus 2d6. Oh. Oh, 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 making up for it already. Feast off famine with Ethan. Yeah. Uh, melee minion is going to... Let's go. Uh, <laughs> oh, passes the morale check with flying colors. Mitz I yelled stands their ground. Himself. No, no, no. Come Mitz, on, Mitz. Mitz is here. Mitz Get takes the club. He raises it above his head. He drops it on the ogre's toe. It hits for three oh. points of bludgeoning damage. Yeesh. Cassian. All right, I'm attacking the weak one, Koibu. Great weapon master. Um, I'm also gonna use my fighting spirit here. So I'm gonna get five temporary hit points. All right. And get advantage on every attack this turn. Excellent. You also are blessed, you remember, for an extra oh, D4 on all your rolls. Yes. So here you go. 20. Hit. 25 damage. God. Oh my God, the damage is insane. That is insane damage. Uh, here's the next one. Natural 20. Uh, 25 damage. Uh, your damage... Yeah, it does D12. Okay, so another 25. Yep. Dead? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely dead. Action surge. Here's two more attacks uh, on the ones on the right. These it's all have advantage? Seven. Yes. You get plus yeah. D4 because plus. you're blessed. Oh, true. Yeah. Oh, oh, barely. Okay. Here you go. 16. Off one. Hit. 20 points of damage, having the ogre's HP on the spot. Now, if I were these ogres, I would be very afraid. Um, the fuck off. The Cyclops finally gets its game together. It can see. It can take a turn. It can see that half of its minions, more than half of its minions, lay dead or retreated. The Cyclops rolls morale. The Cyclops passes with flying colors. My people! Um, he Cyclops will, will look move. At the the hits that Cassian is dealing out and smile at him and nod in a very respecting way. Cassian's He's too busy doing big doinks to even look at you. Big doinks. In big Amish. doinks. Biggest of doinks. This ogre right here will take its great <laughs> Goodbye, club. Mitz. No, no, it's, it's going against uh, Iron Grip the Jailer. Mitz is dead next round. Ten. Whoosh. Yeah, you're rolling bad. Mitz. This is Mitz. Great Come club, on. 23, so 12 points of bludgeoning damage. Mitz is dead. Blah. Not dead. He's got to roll saving throws. 
Minions don't roll death saves. Minions oh, die. No. What? No, we had some we had one of them roll death saves la yeah, last Yeah, no, session. I think minions did should we? roll death saves. Yes, yeah, we I did. The guy who got abducted by the Kazu. Minions should absolutely roll death saves. That's because true. they're a team. They're all right. Allies. You're right. You're right. They He's did roll death being. saves last time. Okay. Yep. Okay. He's a human being, Neil. He's a human Barely. being. Barely. The minion. Uh, big sty. Okay. Uh, what's the deal for climbing up this cliff again? DC 15, athletics or acrobatics check. If you fail, you land on the ground, lose your turn. Okay. It's better I'm to not go doing around. That. I'm just going to move to here. Yeah, that's fine. Where I will cast a spiritual weapon. Mm hmm. Um, nice you know, there. where Mitz was fighting. And then I use also cast Sacred Flame on the on the ogre there as well. Got it. For uh, twelve damage. There we good. It fails the save, takes the damage. Iron grip goes, and I will get you a hammer. I can get my own hammer if you want. Very nice. I you will have a do... hammer. I can find a picture of one card on my back. Yeah. I think so. Don't forget to use your. What, what are they called? You're familiar. Twitch Primes? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember. Is Poison Spray... Yeah, Constitution Saving Throw, so I won't be using that. I'll do another Shocking Grasp. Uh, here's my hit. hit. Uh, 11 hits, so there's damage. There's 10 damage on the ogre beside me. Um, my familiar is just basically circling around the head of the Cyclops. Your hammer gets an attack when summoned, by the way. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. My hammer did attack. Uh, it rolled a 15 to hit. So it does 10 damage, Neil. Wow. All right. Doing real damage here. Yeah. Um, that is a dead ogre. Cypher Quick Claw. Um, it's let's getting down. Some more fucking ogres, Neil. That's what I'm fucking doing. All right. Mm hmm. Cypher Next being ogre. a killer of the arena knows that if you're flanking people you get advantage uh am i flanking this guy no you, you would need to be here yep um that's perfect i can do that right yep yeah. Yeah. yeah boom so i go behind him yep um and uh i roll at advantage let's go yeah attack number one 10 chance to crit Ugh, hit or minimum damage. Two. Hit. Six. Almost minimum damage. And three. Critical hit. For three D8 damage. Plus three. Three D8 plus three. Sixteen. Sixteen. Almost killing the ogre. Almost. Fine. Mott skips a turn. This ogre and rolls more. Uh, cast second wind. To heal for 1d10 plus my fighter level, so 1d10 plus 5. Okay. Uh, the morale of this ogre is in deep question. The ogre will disengage, and uh, so you can only disengage away, and there is not really... The ogre will disengage and, like, try to move past the Cyclops and down like this. Cyclops get an attack of opportunity. The Cyclops That's actually true. Does he does not take it? For not. cowardice? The Cyclops does not take it. No. He's like the ogre an commissar. Guard. He would kill a retreating. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think he would, but I don't this know guy. the Cyclops. The He's Cyclops the does gods. not do it. Good. Ethan will take a turn uh, and take a, another short bow shot straight at the ogre right above uh, Iron Grips. Oof. It is a miss this time. And first death saving throw for our minion is a pass. Ooh, nice. Cassian. Okay, I want you to rule something. Mm -hmm. If I'm here, mm -hmm. fuck. Mm -mm. I want to kill that cowardice fuck. Mm. Oh, sorry. Can I not second wind if I do my offhand attack? You cannot Your second wind if you offhand attack. Action? It's a bonus action. I, Good yeah, fucking not. call. I did can not I go, second wind. Can I Thank go you. here, Neil? No, that clips right through the Cyclops' square. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, can I go here? Yeah. Well, I want to be able to attack. Well, can I go here? You can I go guess. here. Perfect. Thank you. That's Excellent. what I want. As you step into range, the Cyclops will use its ready to attack against you who steps near it with its great club. Okay. And it will whoosh at you with a 24 to hit a for 17 bludgeoning damage. Nope. That's uh, going to be 12 damage. They took it off my temporary hit points. Mm -hmm. so it's going mm -hmm. to be at 34. Mm -hmm. Should be saved. Cool. That would be 14 damage. Uh, Should be on five, 13. Six, seven. 17. Seven, th 48 minus, minus 12. Is, is that 34? I was, I'm at 34. Okay. He wasn't at I had, I, had five, I had five extra temporary hit points. Yeah. You took 17, so you lose minus 12 damage. If you're on 48, then you'd be on 36. He was on 46. Okay. On yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. I'm going to Fighting Spirit this turn. This is my last one. All right. Get advantage on all my attacks this turn. Here you go. Excellent. Grab open Mastery. Miss. Miss. Oh, wait. Miss. D12. You have D12s uh, on oh, both D4, of those. D4. 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 D4s. D4. Yeah, yeah. And bless. Nice. The first one's a hit. And the second one is going to hit because of second one's well. going to be hit. Yeah. That is, good. that is such good value right there. Here you go. Great weapon master and bless is an unacceptable oh. combination. We need to kill Matt immediately. <laughs> uh, the Cyclops is down to less than half HP and hasn't even had a full turn of action. You want another turn of this? Mm. Well, you know... The thing is, it gets two great club attacks that do about 19 damage each. It can take you. It can take you. So it does. And it passed its morale check previously, so it will multi-attack. It will bring the club down on you. Miss. Rich. And the second one. Oh, my God. oh God, no. <laughs> Cyclops. Cassian dodges both great club attacks. Cyclops is in shambles. Everything about this battle has gone completely wrong. Um, except for this side, the top of the map, where things are actually going well. Uh, there's one minion down, dead and dying. There's this fucking dancing hobgoblin, but this, uh, this ogre's got it, right? Great club. 19 will actually hit you for 13 points of damage. If you have I any bring up my hand. Oh, no, shield. I create a magical shield through my oh, fingers. Fuck and this shit. <laughs> he leaves. No, no. <laughs> he leaves. We're not doing this. Do you, have a, do you have any melee weapons in hand? I don't think no, so. No, no. Uh, I have a shield and an empty hand. That's how I right. fight. All right. Base. Well, you know what? This one actually passes his morale check. Um... But honestly, <laughs> he goes over to Steermir. And Great Club Steermir with a 22 for 13 bludgeoning go. damage. Uh, if when you have Neil any concentration. Know what to do, he just attacks Nick. I would start to do that's it. Neil, can I, can I ask a question? Because I yeah, feel like I've been yeah. watching these morale checks. And I feel like some people fail morale checks when they roll under the DC, and some people fail morale checks when they roll yes. under their HP. It's because I keep forgetting how morale checks work. You were supposed oh. to roll higher than the That's morale. That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah, but in second edition, a morale check you're supposed to low roll lower yeah, yeah, than morale, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. so I keep flipping in my brain what it's supposed to be, and then I catch myself, and then I pray no viewers or players to see what's <laughs> happening. But you are so smart. Um, I am so smart. Yes. That's okay, yes. Though. I've been fucking up some of the morale checks. Okay, so he he does thirteen damage to me. Yes. That's nice for him. It's my turn next, though, right? Yes. Don't you rebuke him or no? Uh, oh, well, yes. isn't your. I, yes. I, also, wait, isn't yes, this I, a you... concentration spell? No, or it's not. Spiritual weapon? It's not? Shield shield of faith on Cypher is that. Oh, okay. So, con check. It's at advantage because I've got Warcaster. And you got plus D4. Yeah. It's fine. So, yeah, I rebuke? easy pass. Yeah, so I thunderously rebuke this guy with Wrath of the Storm. Um, doing 2d8 damage to him. Does he get a for save for half? Six. Yeah, he gets a deck save for half. Christ almighty, why everything a deck save? 
Okay, so if he went here, he did 25 feet of movement. He hits you. It hurts him back. And he's going to use his remaining 15 feet of movement just to leave. Just to get the fuck out of here. I attack him. I suppose you can. Wait, isn't your Thundus Rebuke a reaction? A reaction? Oh, uh... I think so. You can use your reaction. Yes, it is. Yeah, okay, yeah. fair enough. All right. But it's your turn anyway. Yeah, so I will attack him with my spiritual hammer. Which is conveniently uh, right there. Mm -hmm. Which is a 12 for 7 damage. Fuck. And then... And then I will walk over here and attempt to stabilize Mitz. Oh my god. For an 18. Oh, yeah. oh, a, 12, oh, 12. a 12, a 12, a 12. A 12 is all you need. Yeah. Mitz is going to live. You damn right he is. Iron Grip the Jailer. Uh, Iron Grip the Jailer will call out and say, where are you going? The maw calls you. Um, <laughs> is there enough range for me to magic missile? Oh, uh, yeah. Me, oh, yeah, definitely. 120 like foot. Feet. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I see that this guy down here is like Omega wrecked. So I'm just going to shoot one little dart at him. Just one little dart. Okay. That's and risky. Then, it's risky, that. But... You do the first dart deals two damage to him. And doesn't Wait, kill him. But where do the other uh, two darts go? The other two run oh. into this guy. Oh, brutal. The next one does three and one D4 plus one for the next one. Last one. We need one more. That's oh, five. That I rolled. Right. So That's low. cringe. So bad. Cypher. Um, Cypher's really liking this fight. She's hyping herself up, kind of looking around at an audience that is not there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, um, I forgot to use my movement. Uh, one, yeah. Two. Keep going, Cypher, while, they, while Iron Grip moves. Uh, she will... Can I flank this Cyclops? Not quite, unfortunately. Not quite. You can get close, though. No, you can let's get, set let's up clip. what's his face for a flank next round. Um. Oh, by going, like, here, and then yeah. he can go around? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Um, she will yell out something in Orcish that the party does not understand. Um... You monsters got messed up nail this time. I overplanned! And, uh, <laughs> she will start <laughs> slashing. Oh my Nash god! 19. Critical hit. Oh, my Ogre Clown soy. <laughs> my Cyclops! 3d8 plus 3 damage. 15. <laughs> You were going to mm -hmm. be so good. And uh, second attack. 21. Hit. For eight. <gasps> All right. And are you going to second wind this round, or are you going to use your bonus action to attack? Um, thinking about it. You said that the club does... Oh, the that club does not much damage. damage. It's pretty But minimal. I think you should attack. It's pretty the minimal. The thing is, I'm definitely not killing it with this hit unless I do a huge crit. Um, yeah, but, but I gotta I think... get to the next guy. You really don't. At least Cypher doesn't <laughs> think that. Um, I'm gonna second wind. Can can I take the roll that I got earlier? Nah, redo it. Oh. I have no idea what it was before, but it was a ten. It was middle of the road. Ugh. Fair. Right. Uh Mott will go. And, um, well, it's till, still too spicy up there to see anything, so Mott is going to chill. Um, oh, Ethan's going to handle him. Fleeing ogre. Uh, Ethan goes. Ethan will take a shot at the fleeing ogre. Let's go. Nice. Seven in the back. Ogre drops down and is gone. Uh, Cypher will yell out to not attack the fleeing ones. Okay. Noted. Cassie. I may attack the fleeing ones. Uh, great weapon mastery at advantage. Hit. Oh, Hit. it's a critical. Oh, yeah. Oof, 22. Oof. Ooh, bad critical, but it's a good 19. hit. So 41 damage will kill the Cyclops. Right Fuck off. Yeah. I get a clean nice. cut. And it's over. The other Cyclopses are fleeing. I think Steermere 
you are the only one with like an opportunity maybe to get them because they're moving like 80 feet per round. I think I can um, get my one here. Well, uh, right, they're they, moving at 80 feet, okay. Yeah, they got a movement speed of 40 and they are dashing. Okay. Well, I think, I think I get basically one chance at a Sacred Flame on this one up here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's going to be out of the range, so save for six damage, so it's probably not going to kill him. Uh, it won't kill him, even on a pass. Or even on a fail, which it is. All right, so I think the two remaining ogres get to flee. This one, um, the one that's fleeing over this way, heads back into the cave. The one that is fleeing over here just runs north and disappears. The 120 foot range. Yeah, I'm magic mithling him. It's shameful to run from. No, back. no, no. I'm saying it. Oh, you are. You could make a half. You can make a move and do it. Yeah, totally. All right, he's getting mithled. I assume he's. I'm just gonna fire them all at him. All right, he's got three HP left, so it's a, it's a done thing. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, don't even... Yeah, he's dead. One ogre makes it into the cave system as the party regroups as Cypher the sun... Will give, Cypher will give Dwarf Razor the stern look that she's given him very often and uh, say the, the orcish phrase that they've like kind of carried out to be their like battle language or whatever to say, like, calm down, stop, it's enough. Uh, Twelve Razors was in like basically like a battle trance. He was excited. He was flinging magic missiles. He was thunder shocking people. He was shielding, and now he starts to calm down. Party, let's go. Uh, let's go check the cave. Make sure there's not any more. Look at all the meat we have. All right. Be on your guard, though. There could be something else in there. I'm gonna go over to the healer. Fight. Yeah, let's. Get, can the healer patch us up before we go in, maybe? Yeah, as sure. we're walking over, I'm gonna ask Mott. Mott, would you mind um, giving me some of Martha's aid? Mott will check her healer feet. Um, as an oh, it only takes an action. Yeah, she will give you D6 plus four plus the maximum number of hit dice which is five so d6 plus nine from a healer's kit on you god that is so good mm -hmm. it's good uh, 14, 14. yep <clears throat> are you the only one who took real damage uh cypher quick claw did and i so took did damage i'm at 26 okay. out of 33 i would like to yeah. be healed as well oh yeah i took i took damage then though this is for cypher 15 this is for steer mirror god damn my Jeez, all, right. Whoa. all right we've got to nerf mott and buff giants definitely um before we go in um cypher will bring up it's a cave that we have pretty clear view of Thoughts on um, building up a tiny hut, camping out here, maybe getting some rest, putting someone on watch. If something exits the cave, we can always see it. We have a pretty good vantage point here. I see no reason to rush in immediately. I can also prepare alarms um, to alert us should anything come into the cave. Send the familiar <laughs> in to explore it and see how far it goes. I think that's a good idea. Uh, you fought well, Cypher. Yeah, you too. Um, I can see why Cassius might have fallen to you. That was quite impressive. I am quite impressive, that is true. She'll just chuckle. So looking at the cave, it's like 60 feet tall, 40 feet wide. It faces the setting sun, but the sun has already gone down behind the three sisters, that, those active volcanoes. So it's completely in shadow and you can't see anything that's inside the cave. And when the sun does rise in the east, the cave's mouth will be completely in shadow the whole time. And so it'll and, still uh, be hard to see it. Mm -hmm. I ask Matt if he can illuminate the entrance to the cave. She can, but she is nervous about getting that close without a, a huge group of people uh, to defend her. I can walk with you, Mott. I'll go too. Or she will cast light on a rock and hand it to you and yeah, uh, let you get closer on your own and hang out back at the boat with Ostigan. 
We set up a tiny so, hut. I put the light over there. Well, let's let's talk about the tiny hut. It's a ten foot radius, right? Um, the cave of the mouth, the mouth, mouth of the cave is sixty feet wide, forty feet tall. So anyone who's in that cave could walk around your tiny hut. Um, Correct. We would have to wanted. set up the alarms first. <clears throat> Okay. Um, spells, well, yeah. this is, I think, a great spot for us to take um, to to start wrapping up our thing because the whatever's in the cave might take a little bit longer than our remaining time, and we haven't checked in on our two beloved dead friends. We're hanging out in the afterlife, or at the edge of the afterlife, not quite in it yet, but in the in between zone. Um, out in Haven, in the jungles and the the tropical forests, sipping on what is it that you drink here? Juice, not uh, not jungle juice, just juice, regular juice, apple like mango. Juice. Okay, apple juice. Vasher is drinking a whiskey sour, um, and it has like a little tiny umbrella in it. Hmm. All right. Um, well, the two of you have seen all sorts of stuff happen in the last few days of, of world time. Your friends have fixed a boat. They've cunningly avoided encounters and taken on ogres and a cyclops. Um, Roy is so excited about all of this. He's watching so intently. Um, he got so excited by seeing the basilisk, the the the, the flying snakes. Mm. He got so excited by hearing about the basilisk. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The cyclops was excited when the cyclops hit the rock. He was like, "No, what? Oh!" He was like freaking out. Um, he was watching the battle, um, soaring out, um, and he's like the entire time he's like talking to Vasher. He's like, the, "I think the the cyberly. I mean, she's a, she's a half orc, but I think she's actually." pretty cool and i think she might actually be a pretty good did you see that she told them to like spare the ones that were running away those i, d I didn't think she was she, she seems like on but that but that hobgoblin i don't trust that guy there's something wrong with that guy i think they're gonna that that guy is that guy's weird don't you think so vasher yeah the hobgoblin uh these are creatures of pure evil i can't believe they're even walking with it the fact that <laughs> did you see the bloodlust when he saw the corpses fall to the ground and the hunger that he looked at Sturmir with. Ugh. Terrible. And he talks about this god of maws. Have you ever heard of anything like that? That's, I've, I, I can't say I, in any of my stories, no. It's, he, it, he, the, 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 he's going to betray them at some point for sure. Yeah. They would do well to throw him into that pit of lava and just be done with him. <laughs> Tough. Um... But right. I will give him the respect. Um, he hardly broke a sweat in that fight, and nothing even glanced him. He's a great fighter, and the way he fights with Cypher, I'm sad I didn't get to see them in the arena. Yeah. I think, uh, I, think I couldn't have really stomached what goes on in that arena. Seeing slaves pitted against each other. You always take the fun out of these stories, Vasher. Come on. I'm lots of fun. I like to walk on beaches and go horse riding. <laughs> you did like to do that. That's true. Well, back in the world, um, our players have had, or our characters have had, a, a pretty solid session of not getting killed of not having to save or die, except for Mott. Um, Cassian, is this your most successful battle yet? You're, there's, this is actual real danger. This uh, Cyclops could kill any one of you. It could have sunk in your boat. This could have been a life or death situation. And yet, it feels like the party barely broke a sweat. It's because the party was well coordinated. We all... Uh stuck together in pretty good packs. Me and Cypher went and handled the big ones on the right. Uh, the party stuck together on the left. I like the addition. I think Cassian really likes the addition of Cypher Quick Claw and Rolf Razor's Iron Grip. They add a good sense of strategy to the party. 
Cassian mm -hmm. would have just went right in the mouth of the cave. <clears throat> they wanted to sit back, watch it a bit, send in some other stuff, and I think it's a good idea. So, yeah. Could have been super deadly encounter, but the party uh, played it well. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, Cypher Quick Claw. You have shown that you you have this relationship with uh, Iron Grip over here, where Iron Grip is always saying these things and offering people these food, and you are already you already know what's up, and you kind of ignore it. And yet, um, there's still a little bit of dissonance. You know, Iron Grip, the jailer, Drawl Razor, did kill a fleeing person. Um, it, it often sounds like the two of you have a very harmonious relationship, but I think we got to see here that it doesn't always work out. Um, what's, what's the deal with that? I think um, at least the way that Cypher thinks about this is that these two are extremely and extremely good pair when it comes to fighting mm -hmm. um, even if their understanding of what it means to fight and what the purpose of fighting is might be a bit different. Cypher is more of the opinion that fighting is something that you it's something honorable, it's something that you do almost for for art or for sport or for it's, it's, it's something that h higher beings enjoy on a different level than an animal fighting another animal for food. Um, the way that she understands fighting is like fundamentally different from the way that a hobgoblin does. But at the same time, she understands that that is just in the hobgoblin's nature um, and doesn't judge him for it. But at the same time, will feel bad when his actions kind of go out of the way of that. And I think there's been a lot of situations in the past where mostly because Cypher knows that in this world it can often be very disadvantageous to act like a complete savage hobgoblin where she's had to reel him in. And at the same time, his savage fighting spirit has brought her further, so she sees it as like a push and pull that gives them a sort of inertia and pushes them both forward in some way. Nice. Um, same question to you there, Rawls Razor. Uh, how do you? How does? How do the two of you manage to navigate the things that seem like they would be a big deal between you? Um, so, for Iron Grip, for for a hobgoblin, and in the culture that he's from, fighting is like, uh, it's just a language, right? It's a way mm -hmm. to communicate. Um, to him, killing that fleeing, uh, killing that fleeing foe, that was like, that was me giving that creature honor by letting it die in battle, right? To, to That was me ending the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, but he's, he's not unintelligent. He understands Cypher's worldview. And so because of the relationship they've had fighting, even when he will go against what you might consider his, his nature, his natural way of being, he will actually pull that back at Cypher's request because of the level of respect and trust he has for Cypher because Cypher speaks the language of war so well, the language of violence. Um, and so when Cypher speaks using normal language, he gives it the same level of respect that he would like the greatest warrior he's ever partnered with, right? Mm -hmm. um, so from that perspective, he sometimes gets frustrated with the sort of systems of honor and the uh sort of how i would describe it is like holding i won't describe it as like holding me back but in the sort of sense of like the way you would hold back someone from going into a fight right um where you're keeping them from letting the heat of battle uh take over their rationale right um mm -hmm. and he resents that a little bit but he's also come to respect it too um in the sense that often Draws razors, just completely fires off all of his spell slots, just does every uses all of his resources, and then Cypher will be like, "You should have saved the spell for that last moment in the fight. You could have used a shield, and you wouldn't have taken that much damage." And, mm -hmm. and so he sees Cypher as like a really good counterbalance to his natural state of being, but there is a conflict there, even if he trusts her. Hmm. Yeah. I get the impression that these creatures native to Arcadia are a lot more understanding of opposing worldviews than the, the foreigners from across the sea. How do you well, feel about that? Oh, go ahead. 
when you got to fight in the arena and it's life or death, you got to you got to get real yeah. understanding or you die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're fighting for your life in the step with whoever you meet and then afterwards in the arena, you kind of start to understand that accepting uh, the differences that someone has isn't uh, it's not because it's the moral thing to do, but because it's just what helps you survive better. Mm -hmm. uh, last but not least, we have Steer Mirror. And this session, we've begun to see some NPCs take over more of the religious guidance counselor role here. Ostigan was talking about the gods and where they come from and their ideas and how they, you know, how they create creatures. And Mott over here, this cleric of Martha, is really doing a lot of support casting and tending to the party's wounds. Does Steermir feel like he is having his um, normal position being replaced by these people, or has Steermir moved on and is now like delegating these lower tasks to these people? What I don't think he necessarily thinks of them as taking his tasks by talking about religion and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, Iingrip was talking about his religion, and I don't think Stermia wants to insult him by saying that the Great Moor isn't a real god or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and Matt being able to cast support spells, I think that's fine. I don't think that bothers Stermia. I mean, he's got better things to do the spell slots and cast Cure Wounds and Bless. Um, Austin was talking about the gods. Yeah, maybe I could have corrected him on some points, but I feel like he was being broadly correct. One thing, I everyone's in pretty high spirits after this, but I've used every spell slot apart from one level one spell slot here. Um, and we're not really close to a long rest, so I'm kind of useless now. I, mm. you know, I get my channel divinity back, but I don't have any spells to use it with. Mm. You are uh, made of meat. Yeah, and I also feel like, yes, the maximized damage once per day thing is strong, but I don't think it's as strong now that we're level five. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think my class is as strong as and now that we've got three fighters kind of like the stuff about being in melee range and tanking damage doesn't really matter that much because we've kind of got three other people who are in melee range so i found myself in the back rows casting spells here but you know his fog cloud did kind of save them from those snakes true um single-handedly so, yeah. defeated the snakes yeah so i think i get I means i get all those xps which is nice so maybe i'm level six now <laughs> Yeah, you but yeah, so. I don't know. I, I I think it went well. Like, but I feel like I've overspent on spell slots. Like, looking at the fact that everyone's on full health, mm. I could have afforded to uh, not spend as much. But I was worried about the ogre, the cyclops. I knew it could. Like, Cypher was on seventeen health at yeah. one point, or something like that, and could have just got one shot. That's why I cast Shield of Faith on him, or her. Sorry, mm -hmm. for the extra two AC. It didn't matter, but um, mm -hmm. I will say. Uh... Cypher also has Relentless Endurance. Um, which means that instead of dropping to zero, she can choose to drop to one. Oh, shit. Very short rest, so she actually just cannot get one shot. That's fucking sick. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know mm -hmm. that either. That's really good. Right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm feeling apprehensive about the rest of the journey until we get to Blup, to be honest. Because if there's like nasty shit in the swamp, I can't really do anything. Well, well, well. We'll see what happens next time on Save or Die. Until then, we're going to be on the after show. Until then, Patreon.com uh, slash save or die to join Neil? the after show. Mm -hmm. Can you also show them the new merch? Yes, I can. Hey, we have new merch. Uh, it's going to be linked on our Twitter. It's on the Patreon. Uh, it's on the Discord. Uh, and I think it'll be in the YouTube comments, probably pinned. So check it out. And Neil's about to show you it, right? It's right here. here. You can see Boom. it. Look at these skull shirts and the Save or Die logo shirts. Yeah. Ships internationally. So uh, make sure to check that out. And if you're a Patreon, you get 20% off on all merchandise. Just go to the Patreon Discord and um, it'll be pinned. <clears throat> Thanks. All right. Well, I think that's it. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you.